Thank you very much, gentlemen, and what a day in prospect. 166.3 kilometres to go. Two minutes is the gap between the breakaway that is changing all the time, forming all the time, and being chased down all the time by Tinkoff Saxo. Manuele Boaro at the front, praised yesterday in the rest day press conference for all the great work he's done for Tinkoff Saxo and Alberto Contador. Contador, remember, in pink all the way since Liguria, apart from that one day where he had the crash in Yezolo. Fabio Aru, well, how's he rested? Has everybody rested? It's always a bit of a lottery as to how you go on the second rest day. Is the body just wanting to pack up? Or can you do another week? And with the week we have in prospect as well, it's not going to be easy. Guys wanted to work for each other out in the breakaway. Difficult to get organised again. There's the presence of some big names there. Ryder Heistahl is one of them. This is Ivan Rovny towards the front of the peloton. Another of the superb domestic riders who's equally as good on the flat or the hills. And Tinkov trying to do all the work today for Alberto Contador. Is this going to be the day where Contador wants to write his name into history? Remember, we've had Pantani here, that great pantani Indurain battle that the gents were talking about back in 1994. We'll talk about all the history of the Mortirolo, relatively new in Giro history, but already written and etched into the stone on the side of the mountain and into the history books here. It is a hugely difficult climb still to come with those little ascents to Aprica as well. We've been up Paso Tonale already. We've had the uh, Madonna Campiglio to the top of the ski resort and over the hill again, the Campo Carlo Magno. Paso Tonale is always an area we approach on this stage in the Giro round, second rest day. And this year, the mega mountain is the Mortirolo. Queen stage today in terms of difficulty, really, no doubt about that. And you can see already that Tinkoff Saxo versus Astana, that battle we've seen right since day one on the Giro d'Italia, is getting ready for its latest chapter. Stage 16 today, 174 kilometres in total from Pinzolo to Aprica. 104 remain, loads to come this afternoon. Keep it the home of cycling. So the Queen stage comes after the final rest day, 175 kilometres in total. The weather closing in on the breakaway at the minute, the breakaway of 11 riders. Let's go through them. Perizzotti, Bukvalter, Della Cruz, Sardini, Mihailov, the Bulgarian champion, and Niemetz, the Pole. Arne, the Belgian, Fernandez from Spain, Heistal, the former winner, with Clark, who's only just made it across, and Fabio Fellini as well, riding for Trek Factory Racing. 11 in the break then, 2-0-4, they're not being allowed a big advantage at the moment. Long, long way to go today. We've already had a second category, Campo Carlo Magno. We've had the second category, Paso Tonale. On the descent down from that now and on the way to an intermediate sprint. Then we're up to Aprica and a first passage of today's finish line before a descent to Tirano, another intermediate sprint, the mighty Mortirolo with ramps up towards 20%. A very, very sharp descent, the same sort of descent that we saw just before Aprica when um, David Arroyo caught Ivan Basso in 2010 and Basso put time in him again on the ascent to Aprica, which is only a third category climb, but at the end of all that, it's just like when you have too much to do in a day and that one little thing tips you over the edge. Not the hardest, but you've already done too much already. Less than 100 kilometres to go alongside me, Rob Hatch, is Sean Kelly. And Sean, it's not what they needed after the rest day, this is it. <laughs> no, it goes on and on. Uh, again, we have a breakaway, 11 riders here, and uh, a very strong one. Some very you know, uh, uh, powerful riders, and also you know the riders that can uh, hold on out in front. So for race leader, Contador, it's uh, a difficult task as it has been every day in this race you know to control um, the breakaway they seem to be like you know, a difficult time um, and uh, you know this day this is going to be a big day after a rest day you're always concerned you know how much do you do in the rest day just to keep the rhythm right keep the body right you don't want to you know go into this ra this day this race today with any little bit of a handicap so you have to be sure to do what you need to do and uh, weather conditions as we can see not favorable at all and that's uh, going to make it more difficult again and you know five mountains today and it's, it's the big one today it is the big one today there's so much more to come afterwards as well this isn't the be all and the end all of the Giro the final verdict is still going to be delivered on Saturday we expect when we get to the gravel roads of the Col delle Fenestre 
We've got the Sestra after that before we go to Cervinia as well, the ski resort. Today, we're up at Aprika. Mortirolo before we get there. This is uh, Mihailov, the Bulgarian champion. Not his first breakaway of this Giro d'Italia. If you're Alberto Contador today, haven't won a stage yet, is this the one you want to win? Well, race leader, they always want to win one of the uh, big monument stages and uh, we did say on Sunday that uh, Contador, and he did try, you know, we could see when Lando went in the attack a bit early, he was marking him, he was seeing how good they were. In the end, he, you know, he just looked at uh, Aru and really controlled him in the end. The finish may be not as, uh, not as difficult as uh, Contador would like. And today, again, it's not that majorly difficult uh, final, um, you know, the two kilometres, three kilometres is not so difficult as the earlier part. So if Contador wants to win, he's going to have to try and, you know, explore this group really and go a bit further out, but he's capable of doing that. I think, you know, Contador, unless there's a change, and that is the big question, you know, will he start to tire in the final week? Because when you're really good, Second week in the race, can you hold that real, that real big form? That is the question for Contador and Astana will keep on trying as they have been doing all of this race. With, with the team being so strong, they're going to try and work them over again today in the final. It's funny, you say it's not a difficult finish today, but it's a bit like when you go out for a few pints, isn't it? And you always say it's the last one that did it. It's not the hardest, but maybe all the stuff that came before did the damage. Well, the, it will have a marking effect, certainly, the, you know, the climbs before that. But what I mean by that on the final climb is just the run-in is not a real steep one. If you have the final two kilometres where it's, you know, 12, 15%, that's where Contador would be very difficult to beat. Uh, but on this run-in today, so he's going to have to go a bit further out, but again... You know, depend on situation. What an amazing you know, uh, race we had on Sunday when we see Astana, like a team time trial. It looked like you know Contador was going to be in difficulty, but slowly they just eliminated their own men. And then we had you know uh, the two riders from Astana at the end of, against Contador, but uh, he managed it quite well. And even on the run into the final climb, he just took that preem to say, uh, "I'm here. I'm not in any difficulty. Uh, I'm in control." Yeah, we saw Bruno Cengialta, sports director, in the little report we had, courtesy of the gents on, on Giro Extra before we came to air today. And he was happy, he was just saying, yeah, well, he could do this on his own, does Contador, he doesn't need a team alongside him. They're doing a great job for him now. He was praising them at the rest day press conference yesterday. Certainly the likes of Boado and Ivan Rovni. Sergio Paulinho, we heard, has got particularly good form at the minute, but the main man for him has been Matteo Tosato on the front all the time. Ivan Basso doing a lot of work early on, perhaps disappointing in the high mountains a little. But of course, another man who, who's getting on now and his role is changing in the sport of cycling. He's got a new role this year as a domestique. Last time we were racing to Aprica on the Giro d'Italia, he was the man taking the wind, so he'll have good memories today. And if uh, Contador needs any advice as to how to, to tackle that finish, Sean, he's certainly got the right man alongside him. Well, I think Basso was very important in the uh, group of uh, Tink of Saxo because when you're riding in the front, to know you know how hard you have to ride, how much you allow the breakaway. Of course, Basso will be making that calculation uh, with the director of Sportive, and he's not really good enough in the final anymore. He's pushing on, as you said. So you know he's doing his job early, and uh, there's other men for further on. But the interesting one more, uh, on Sunday that. Contador, you know, Mick Rogers, Kruzinger, he lost them uh, earlier on than we would have expected because they were not riding early. So that's always a danger and uh, that would be a little concerning that he uh, be isolated too early in the race, the, uh, the race leader, Contador. Well, we'll talk about whether the right thing to do for Astana is continue in the same vein or not when we come back after our next commercial break. For now, though, just a reminder of the situation out there at the minute. 11 riders out in the front, two minutes and seven an advantage. Ryder Heisdahl yet again in his umpteenth break on this Giro. He's 13th overall. 11 minutes and 17 won't worry them too much, though. And he is with 10 other riders with just less than 95 Ks to go. Already, this is what's left of the pink jersey group. We'll see you in a minute. Welcome back. No Richie Port today for Team Sky. He's left the Giro d'Italia back home in Monaco. His aim now is to get towards the Tour de France. Make sure he's in the team. Two minutes and 18 for 11 riders up front. Pelizzotti, Zardini, Buckwalter, Mihailov, Fernandez, Almi, Niemetz, De La Cruz, Clark, Heijdal and Fellini. This is the front of the race. Przemysław Niemetz, the Polish rider who will want a stage win if he can out of this Giro d'Italia now. 57 minutes and 54 down. It hasn't gone as he hoped on general classification. And 
For Sky, it's a different thing now, Sean. Richie Port had a bit of a nightmare after a very, very promising start of the year. Not quite sure who's got the motor home or whether they've sent it back. Get an idea if they're going with the leader, it's Leopold Koenig who's moved into it at 6 minutes and 36. But change for them, but a top five for Koenig would represent a good result, wouldn't it? Certainly along with the couple of stage wins they have and the red jersey on the back of Elia Viviani at the moment. Well, I'm sure they've rented the motor home for the three weeks, <laughs> <laughs> so they'll have to hold on to it to the end. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see who's going to uh, take up uh, residence there. <laughs> but, uh, yes, unfortunately for Richie Port, a disastrous Giro. Uh, I suppose the thing to look at and the thing to take from it from uh, Richie Port's point of view is, you know, it was just bad luck, you know, very, very bad luck, and it just takes you to the race, and that's bike racing, you know, it's, it's cruel at times, and... Um, the uh, disappointing part for me is that Richie Port, it looked like that he was going to put up a good challenge in this Giro. Unfortunately, he did not get the opportunity to do it. We're not going to get that to see him, you know, challenging uh, Contador, Aru and, and the rest. He has t he's gone away now to prepare for the Tour of France. And that's what he got to do. He, uh, he was going to do nothing this race. He was carrying an injury, a knee and a hip injury. Morale really at his slowest, so the best thing to do is go away and try and prepare for the Tour of France and to come to the uh, Tour in the best possible shape. But for Sky, you know, they've had a good Tour, they've got stages. Um, Koenig is in a real good position. He's uh, looking good. He looked good on Sunday and he finished quite strong. Uh, and in general classification, when you see where he is, I think he's, you know, in a position where he could move up. We'll see where it goes. Slurpold Koenig. If he's not moved into the caravan, just check on eBay. It might be on there at the minute. But um, he was talking in an interview very, very seriously after the last stage, saying that, no, I feel good. Very happy with how things have gone. Six minutes and 36. He actually said, I hope those two minutes I lost in the crash in Yezolo aren't going to stop me from winning the Giro d'Italia. So he's certainly positive. I'm not sure whether that's realistic, Sean, but he's certainly positive. Well, yes, very positive. But um, I'm not sure if he meant for you to win the... Uh, the Giro. I think he was talking about the general classification, maybe the podium if he was, you know, two minutes off the podium, for example. Well, then, you know, that would be a real disappointment. And uh, looking at the classification at the moment, um, difficult to see because um, when we see him on Sunday, he was in difficulty on the final climb. And, you know, the riders, Aru, uh, Landa, Amador, all of those riders, you know, looking quite strong. But again, things can change a lot in this final week. And, Know, weather conditions, real difficult mountain stages to come. The general classification could change a lot. I mean, right from the uh, top of the uh, the podium where Contour is, that all could change. Heading towards the Valtellina today. We've been up already in the region of Trento, in Alto Adige, German-speaking region close to Passo Tonale. Into Lombardy at the minute. Edolo hosted the finish of the second to last Giro stage in 1997, won by Pavel Tonkov. Ivan Gotti was wearing the Maglia Rosa then. Ultimately, he would win the Giro. Feed zone, and I think they'll have deserved their lunch by all the climbing they've done already. That's just one of those days, climbing out of the start. How does that affect things as well? There's not even a, a bit of flat to get going. You climb out of the start, they went straight up Madonna e Campiglio today. Fairly strong rhythm, not the crazy, crazy rhythm that we've seen over the last couple of weeks but it was strong enough it certainly wasn't pedestrian and after a rest day it's certainly going to wake you up and get you straight back into racing again well um, if you're suffering in the race and uh, you have been suffering on Sunday of course the rest day will be very welcome but again you know you only recover so much and when you have to climb uh, Campanillo after being up at on Sunday, <laughs> it's scary, and uh, the unfortunate thing again today, you know, we have Africa, we have to climb that twice up it, and if you're suffering, you know, the first time it is, uh, when you come through the finish area, still 70 kilometres roughly to go, and of course you throw in the motor roll in between, that is a big, big menu. Crazy. 85.5 k's to go, Heijdal through the centre. He certainly has to be congratulated for his courage in this Giro d'Italia. He's obviously conscious of the fact that he's a previous winner of this race. He's been there, he's done it. It was a special, special win when he took it on. They're on Aprica now for the first of two ascents, as Sean was just saying. It's an average slope of 3.5%, which makes it a third category climb. But with maximum ramps at 15%, it is certainly not an easy climb. And with Pelizzotti out there again, Heijdal out there again, 
it's not for the lack of trying for those old guys, is it? No, and uh, chapeau to Heisdal. We did see him on Sunday as well. He, you know, he missed the uh, he missed the front group on the uh, Paso Duane, and uh, he was chasing there on the final climb. We see him. He left the group of Jürgen van der Broek and uh, a lot of other the, uh, the the favourites to make a place in the top ten in general classification. So he rode all the final climb on his own. And I was asking myself, what's he going to gain by doing this just to ride out the alone? But when you look at where he finished, he was a 3.11 behind Landa and, uh, of course, um, Contador Aru. And when you go back to Vandenbroek, he was at 5.47. So he did a good job there because, you know, he made up uh, a lot of time on some of the other guys who were fighting for a place in the top ten. And he's been in the break many times as well. So no fight uh, lacking there at all. Coming up to the feed stage now, as we go up to Aprika and the first passage through the finish line. Just before the break, we were talking about uh, Astana. And, of course, we'll, we'll go on to talk about them again later on today, probably when we're on the descent from Aprika, approaching the mighty Morti Rolo to see what they're going to do. I've just been told we're going to go for another quick break again in a minute. Get it out of the way before we get to the Morti Rolo itself, as we're through Cortino Golgi. Nobel Prize winner in medicine in 1906. <laughs> 83 kilometers remain. We're on our way up to Aprica for the first time. It's all about save yourself if you can when we get to the Montirolo. Montirolo today with Alberto Condoro in the pink. Two minutes and seven seconds. 11 riders out in front. Alberto Contador had uh, a good rest day yesterday, he said. Let's go and see what he said in the press conference. Well, Monday, rest day at the Giro d'Italia. Not for everybody, though, with the mechanics doing all the work on the bikes before that decisive and upcoming week. At the Tinkoff Saxo Hotel, journalists didn't have any rest either. They were all invited for the press conference from the pink jersey of the Giro d'Italia. Chance to ask him that question. How can he manage to stay focused on the Giro, leading with an important advance, without thinking about just keeping something in reserve, maybe, for the Tour de France? Cotador talking to the journalists, giving them the copy, enjoying his day. Once the big questions came in, these were his responses. Well, I think the only thing I can do right now is to save some energy by going quietly to my room. It's going to be a really demanding day on the Mortirolo. You can't really afford to think about the tour now because it's very, very far away. I have to think that there are six days of this race left until Milan, and only afterwards we'll turn our attentions to the tour. Tomorrow in the Mortirolo is going to be a very hard day. That day's arrived. We've just seen Chris Yul Jensen drop off from the front of this bunch. What's going to happen here today, Sean? Are we expecting fireworks already on the Mortirolo, the main climb, coming up next? It's going to be the climb that sort of marks the stage, really. We've got these two ascensions of Aprica, third category climb, and we'll see the last time we're up it, who's got what left. But are we going to see the same tactics from Astana? Are we going to see Contador isolated once again? Well, of course, a lot of talk about the uh, tactics of Astana on Sunday. You know, they really put uh, their leader, Aru, under pressure, but you have to go and try. You know, a rider out there, he might say, well, I'm feeling OK, but not at my best. But uh, I think uh, the director sportif of uh, Astana decided, well, we'll put the team at the front. That way, Aru will see that they're really working for him and see can we do something in the end. And, of course, you never know what Contador as well. Although the signs he was thrown up there, the intermediate sprint going for that. But again, like, that could be a lot of bluff. And uh, you just never know how he was feeling for the final climb. So you have to keep on trying. And I'd not be surprised if we see on the Mortirola a stand trying to do something from a, f a bit further out and maybe put men up the road. And that's where, you know, you could put the Contador difficulty because we have seen in the past uh, difficult stages where he gets isolated, especially on Sunday past. So I'd not be surprised if we see fireworks. I'm hoping we will, and that way, you know, they, they will you know make the race more interesting. But the Mortirola, I think, is the only place where they can do the final climb of the day. 
percentage wise is not good enough to really put any of the big favourites uh, the men up there at the top of the general classification in difficulty we just saw a shot of Ilio Kessa. Save a thought for those guys here as well. Save a thought for the Gruppetta because you have a time limit to make. It's a final week. You want to make it to Milan. It's not an easy thing to do. And, and the author, Richard Moore, in his latest book, Etat, that was released last year, a really good read, by the way, said that stages like this are B-sides to the sprinters' hit singles. You've got to stay in the race to be able to sprint in Milan and have a go for it. And, we don't often see that on our screen, Sean, but in the Gruppetto, it can be horrible on a day like this. Yes, well, it's certainly horrible for the sprinters because you have to hang on as long as possible uh, on a stage like today when you have, you know, a climb out of the, uh, the staff to 13 kilometre climb. You're hoping that there's not too much fireworks in the earlier part where the peloton, you know, blows to pieces and you find yourself three or four minutes at the top of the first climb after 13 kilometres. Then it's going to be a long, long day. So the sprinters will be just looking at each day. They know the final day in Milan, there's a stage there for them, but you just work it day by day and you try and get through. And you try and hang on as long as possible in the main peloton. And uh, then when you finally get into the bus, as they say in biking terms, where there's a big group of riders behind get together, then they ride the climb at a good, strong pace, not overly strong where they lose a lot of riders. Try and keep a big group together on the descent, make it very fast. And they would make it maybe faster than the, uh, the big favourites because that's where they can make up time and they take a lot of risk. Unfortunately today, there is not any flash. And uh, that's something, you know, where they would also get together, work real well, keep the pace real high and limit the losses there because they are going to lose on the big climbs and especially on the Motorola, the Gruppetto will lose a lot of time. But all you can do is just fight and hopefully you're, you're good enough to stay in the Gruppetto and the Gruppetto will make the time limit. Yeah, the bus, as Sean was saying, the autobus from uh, French cycling language, which is usually the terms, a set of terms we adopt in English. But it was Gruppetto in this part of the world. Marco Pantani is present, they say. He's certainly present in spirit, at least on the next mountain we go up, the Mortirolo. All the history of him and Indurain in 1994. What do you remember watching that day, Sean? Well, it was amazing. Um, you know, <coughs> his climbing ability was just uh, something spectacular. And, of course, it's something we will always remember. Unfortunately, you know, there's, uh, there's parts of it which we don't want to remember. But, as you said, uh, a number of times in Italy, like you know, the people they love uh, Pantan, they love looking back at the old uh, um, at the old clips, see him, you know, on the climbs and the way he went about it as well. You know, just a pure climber, but also for a pure climber to be able to win a big three week tour, and he done that one, you know, Tour of France, Tour of Italy. I think uh, when you consider all of that, that's the reason that still Pantani lives on. And he was in the middle of all that Indurain domination as well. And Indurain, as uh, Juan Antonio Fletcher was saying, he said, it's the, guy where, it's the day where they most tired him out in his career on the Mortirolo. Marco Pantani was a first serious rival for Indurain in, in quite a while at that point. Well, I think if you look at that Indurain's time and then you go back a bit further maybe to Eno's time when he was dominating the tours, you had some good climbers. You know, they could really cause a problem on the final mountain of the day. But nothing like Pantani who could ride... He could ride well for three weeks. He could ride, you know, in the attack a long, long ways out, which he did. But he could also time trial pretty well. He could limit his losses there against, you know, a super time trials like in Duran. And for all of those reasons, I think, you know, he's, uh, he's, you know, dearly remembered. Through the intermediate sprint. And bonus seconds mopped up this time by the break, which means that it should be a nice and calm behind in uh, the main group when they come over that intermediate sprint. First of two today, by the way. We have another one coming up in Tirano, right on the base of the Valtellina floor. River runs through there. And that's before we go up the mighty Mortirolo. 79 kilometres remaining. It's all bubbling up very nicely today. Just over two minutes for a break of 11. Pelizotti, Zardini, Bukwalter, Mihailov, Arme, Fernandez, Niemetz, De La Cruz, Clark. Remember, pink jersey already in this Giro d'Italia. Ryder Heistel, we've seen at the front again, always active. And Fabio Fellini there too. Peloton chasing on. Get the official time check as well. We've seen Ivan Basso. Got a cap on today, second wheel. Hands on the tops as he likes to climb. Meantime, here is uh, Paulinho swinging it from side to side. In fact, it's Basso third wheel, by the way. Ivan Rovni just hiding behind Paulinho as we looked at that shot there. 
really important men this week. And we're going to see now that that gap is already coming down, Sean. Climb here has done a bit of damage to the gap. It was 2 minutes and 10. It's going to be around 140 here. It's not big, really, going into that big, big Mortirolo climb, is it? Sorry, it's not big at all, and I'm surprised that uh, Tinkoff, Saxo are working so strong on the front. And they have been doing that every day that there's a breakout, you would say, well, they can leave this break go to 10 minutes, because if you look at Heisdahl, for example, he's at 11 minutes. So if you leave him go to five or six minutes, he's not going to be that strong in the end that they've been out there all day. That's, you know, he's going to hold on. But, you know, they continue on riding a real fast race. It looks like the team that they're riding so strong, they cannot put hold the brake to the minimum. Less than 80 kilometres to go, and Tinkoff Saxo have made it race on. Nice, nice rhythm from them at the minute. Heading up to Africa, and then after that, we will be heading down towards the beginning of the Mortirolo, the mighty Mortirolo. We've already had movement up front as we look at the back. Ryder Heisdahl taken off on his own. He's decided the gap was far too small, and it's going to be interesting to see how it went. It's Amel Moanar. A lot of people getting rid of jackets, getting rid of arm warmers. They know that very soon, Sean, the pace could well be on, and it's going to be pretty frantic towards the finish. Yes. Getting rid of some uh, rain wear and uh, getting some bottles. Well, we can see some guys getting sticky bottles there from the uh, Lotto uh, Jumbo team. We can see Talenghi, who was actually in the race. You'd forget, you know, last year he had such a great start in Belfast. He was in the break in the earlier part, took the mountains jersey and was very to the four, push the four in the first days. We were talking about uh, that day in 1994. Our colleague Brian Smith has written to us. He said that he was riding there in 1994, although not riding next to them. He said he remembers the Mortirolo very well as he did it in slow motion. Good on you, Brian. Well, they did most things in slow motion if they were anyway steep. <laughs> sorry, no sorry, Brian. <laughs> 79 k's to go on the road. Tinkoff Saxo over here. Contador is in the pink. We've had uh, Ryder Heistel take off up the front. He's decided, Sean, that 1 minute and 31 is not enough of a gap for him. Yes, um, and surprising to see that once again, to go on your own with, you know, 79 kilometers to go, uh, which was out there, you know, uh, it takes, uh, it takes a rider mentally, you have to be very, very strong to do that. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, was the uh, breakaway of 11 riders not working well? From what we've seen, they seem to be just working quite well together, sharing the pace, setting on the front. But it's uh, the problem, uh, Tink of Saxo here, just keeping the pace very high all the time and advantage 130 at the moment. But uh, as we've seen from uh, Cannondale Garman, in the past as well, there was another occasion, the first week of the race, um, they sent Ryder out a long ways out, but unfortunately, you know, he got uh, swallowed up in the very final, but it's a big, big ask for uh, Heisdahl to hold on on his own out here with just only one thirty advantage. Heading to Aprica, mighty Mortirolo. Brian Smith, come back to you, Sean. I'd get hiding next time you see him. He says, Stelvio before Mortirolo, then Aprica twice. He says, Kelly's for it. Chapeau, Brian. <laughs> 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 but in all seriousness, a, a real, if it's a hard stage today, Stelvio first, Mortirolo, Africa a couple of times, that really was a grand tour stage. Yes, well, uh, in the Giro, you know, they have been, uh, they have been killer this stages. And when you look at, you know, these, these monuments uh, that we have on today, the Mortirola, you know, the Gavia, etc., etc., uh, it's amazing those climbs. Like, you know, the, when you look at the gradient uh, and uh, the distance of the climbs, well, um, you know, for anybody that uh, is not a great climber, you're going to suffer. And I know the feeling Brian had, and had it myself many times, because climbing, not my forte point either. 78 k's to go. Well, Heisdahl is trying to make it his forte point here, but it's a big ask, as Sean was saying. This is the remainder of the group on the right-hand side. The Etix rider is David de la Cruz, the Catalan rider. Zotti there as well, and Roni Sidamek, Zaldini in that group. Ben Buchwald, who's been in a couple of breaks so far as well. Nikolai Mihailov from CCC. One minute and 38. Decent-sized group still behind, but... 
can't see it being too long before that changes. Thankfully, the rain's gone away. We did not want that today. Although the rain jacket's been passed back to the cars. In the meantime, it's... Oh, dear. We said that a lot of the rain jackets have been passed by the cars. Commentators curse there. I think that's Zardini, is it? Certainly from the breakaway, maybe, or even further back. It looks like the back of the peloton, one of the uh, Bardiani riders trying to get his jacket back to the car. It just shows if you hang on for it too long, try to take it off in the wrong place, you're tired. Third week of the Giro, trying to climb, and it ends up in the rear mech. Yes, well, it's not a force we've seen. There. It's happened a lot of times. Last year as well, we had a few uh, instances where uh, the riders, uh, the rain jacket just falling into your rear wheel. And uh, when you're going uphill, not too dangerous because, you know, you go into a hall very quickly. But it is a real danger when you're going downhill fast if you have the rain jacket that falls into your wheel well then you can get a quite heavy fall and there was one rider last year who got quite a heavy one i think it was one of the guys from katusha cannot remember the name uh, but thank god the rain is uh, is easing off here and you know there's a risk maybe of showers in the end but the showers are not too diff not too much because uh, then you, you know you're not out there for a number of hours in the uh, in the rain you don't have time to get cold and from here on it's going to be action all the way with all this climbing while well, they're going to keep warm but the descent again more to your order it's a long descent we will see you know the the riders putting maybe paper up under the jerseys or maybe taking just the gillet to get down off of that one 4500 meters of climbing in total today thanks to nick gale for asking uh, about the total ascent in today's stage and remember you can keep your questions coming in on the hashtag on twitter home of cycling you can tweet at Rob Hatch TV. 76 k's to go. And this is the approach to the finish line. You get a bit of a preview here. It's a funny climb up, Rika. It's really steep at the start. We saw the 15% ramps in the first two kilometers, then it really does level out towards the top. And it's going to be about what everybody has left towards the end for the minute. Ryder Heistar has 1 minute and 51 seconds. But he's got the Mortirolo and 76 k still to go. And you can see the peloton coming through the three kilometers to go banner. And when they come through it the next time around, they certainly won't be all together like this. 31 seconds for Heisdahl from the chasing group, his breakaway companions. Leonardo on Twitter saying this is going to be a futile breakaway, and it, it's hard not to agree with him. Heading to Aprica, by the way, we just saw some beautiful images of the winter sports you can do. You can do snow mountain biking up the top of here in the winter at 1,173 metres. If anybody has anything less, it's a fast enough running. Remember the last time the Giro d'Italia was climbing up this road, it was Ivan Basso. He'd go into pink here, he'd win the Giro d'Italia in 2010. A little ride into that wonderful Verona arena. Liam Ahern on Sean, by the way, on Twitter says that uh, you're being too modest. Sean can't climb. He went toe to toe with Lucho in the 87 Welton, did all right. Well, um, I didn't say can't climb. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I did. But yes, the climbs, the big mountain stages, there were the ones which I had difficulty uh, in, in, in the big tours. Um, you know, being a, being a rider who was a sprinter in the earlier days, then developed to become an all rounder. But, uh, I was always, uh, you know, in difficulty on some of the big mountain stages. That was the one which I, you know, had the problems in the big toes. 75 k's takes us to the finish line. A strange old little resort, this. It's got the main road running through it, the odd restaurant off the side of the road. No real high mountains. It doesn't feel like you're in the high mountains. Of course, you're just at over a thousand meters. But as we've seen today, and as we're going to see, it's certainly surrounded by big high passes. And on the side of the road here, not one of those places that feels like you're in a big ski resort. Aprika then, just uh, over 100 kilometres into the race today. And it's going to be the former winner, Ryder Heistal, looking for a stage win on the Giro d'Italia. Certainly not going to win the race overall. 11.17 back unless uh, sports director Charlie Vigelius can pull off another tactical masterclass on a couple of the two mountain stages or so. 
across the line we come. First passage of the finish line. Two hours, 51 minutes in the saddle and already a really good crowd developing. It's going to be all changed by the time we come back here again. Big cheer for the likes of Basso, Contaro, Aru, all the big names as they come across. But look where we're headed. Right inside. Sunshine of the local area. Two minutes and one then. One thirty-four is uh, Simon Clark had a really good Giro d'Italia. Orica Greenedge had the first week they wanted. Already been a, a more than good Giro d'Italia for them, as the last one was last year. But to do something this time in this week, I'm sure would make their Giro complete. Pelizzotti on the left hand side. Andrulli rider riding across the line. About 30 seconds at the minute for Heisdahl. Two minutes and two for these guys. Azure de Zerard is coming to the front. Patrick Gretsch still in the group. Is this going to be a day for Betancourt? Oh, a minute and four now. So Heisdahl pulling out his lead. It looks as though, Sean, that these guys slipping quite quickly now back towards the peloton. Yes, it looks like that they're not uh, really organised anymore. And uh, Heisdahl is pulling out a nice advantage a minute already. Um, and um, I reckon that's the reason Heisdahl, you know, he, f uh, he felt that back in the group, that there was a lot of people who did not really want to contribute at 100%. And when that starts, well then, get out of it. He would probably like to have a number of riders with him. If he had another two or three riders to make it maybe a four-man leading group, that would be the perfect situation. But on this, um, on this stage, there's no flash run in the valley of anything to, uh, to, pr to for, for a rider, you know, on your own. So you're climbing, you're descending all the time. So, you know, out front on your own is not the worst thing today. If you had 20, 30 kilometres in the valley, that's where it becomes difficult when you find yourself on your own. You need, you know, a few rides in the breakaway. So for Heisdahl, it will be interesting to see as we see the peloton just coming over just over two minutes in the race. And that's nice. Ivan Basso leads them over. Malia Rosa were and Malia Rosa winner the last time we were here. Basso to the front as we come through Aprica. This time we head to Milan as opposed to Verona. And it certainly won't be him who is pulling on the pink jersey. Could be one of his teammates. That's the aim for Tinkoff Saxo. A few more bead-ons, a few more bars handed out by people on the sides of the road. High start with seven points there for that uh, King of the Mountains classification. Blue jersey, by the way, still on the back of Benyat and Chalsti today. Red, I'm not sure we're going to see him on the back of uh, Elia Viviani, who's still level on points with Giacomo Nizzolo. Contador, of course, in pink, and Aru, the man wearing white. Sixty-eight kilometers to go. 107 covered in total. On our way to the descent to Tirano. Right, Heistar's extended his lead whilst we've been out on the break. Taking a few risks on the descent, pedalling away, two minutes and 24. Always get nervous when I see people sitting on the top tube like that. <laughs> Hope there's no potholes on the way down to Tirano. Well, there was one right there. Thankfully, he was back in the saddle. This is what's coming down behind. A few Katusha riders there. It was good contract news for Katusha yesterday. Luca Paolini signed up for another year who can give so much in the peloton, can get his own results, help the younger riders. And Luca Paolini will be in a Katusha jersey and on the World Tour for another year in 2016. Also news that they're going to sign the latest Colombian sensation. Jonathan Restrepo will be riding the Vuelta Burgos, I think it is, in August. So he's on his way to Katusha for a few months, looking to try and make it into a full-time deal, rather like Fernando Gaviria. Sprinter who signed for Etix Quick Step. More Colombian riders to come. And going back to the Mortirolo, it was a, a Venezuelan who was the first over, the first ever passage of the Mortirolo. One of the easier ascents. There's three of them up there. We're not taking on the easier one today, but one of the easier ascents. It was in 1990. It was uh, Leonardo Sierra who got up there first. He crashed on the way down, but still won at Aprica. They've got a, a funny link. Mortirolo and Aprica since the Mortirolo was, was first climbed in 1990. Mortirolo is special really, not just because of 
the gradients on it, but it's special because Africa comes after it as well. You've got that extra little test that we were talking about. And Africa really needs Mortirolo to become an important place in cycling as well, because it needs that big ascent to test anybody on a stage there. Yes, well, I think it's uh, a big part of the stage to have the uh, Mortirola um, before we get to the finish here today, but, um, you know, they're all... Uh, they're all monuments and, uh, you know, it's amazing uh, those climbs. When they were introduced, of course, you know, Stelvio, I think, was in the 50s. Uh, you know, I think uh, at that point, just imagine the gear ratio the riders had. You know, you had to change your wheel at the bottom of the climb. You had to switch it, take out your wheel and switch it and get onto the right gear for climbing. And that's all they had. They just had two gears. And, you know, you go further on, you know, in the... Uh, in the 80s, uh, you had you know, a, a gear of maybe 42, 25. Now, if you look at the gears they lose when they go for these climbs, if you take uh, some of these sportive riders, they probably ride a 30, 28, and their problems getting up those climbs. Uh, that just tells the gradient. And uh, you know, when you're out there racing for two over two weeks, and then you get to those climbs in the final week of a big tour, um, it's amazing the way the riders, you know, can get up it at such a rate. And, you take Heusdal here, you know, going out at 80 kilometres of the finish uh, with what's left out there, you know, it's um, it's an amazing sport that the guys have the still the morale to do that at this point, and um, it's just bike riders, um, they are like that, they're just hard, hard guys. It's a special mentality, isn't it? And it's not always regarded as an extreme sport cycling, but when you look at what these guys are doing now, descending a mountain, basically in their underpants at 80 kilometres per hour, the climbing they've got to do afterwards, the weather, the fact that, as you say, it's been two weeks racing like this, it, it is an extreme sport. There's no other description for it. Well, I don't think you can uh, find any sport that you can, uh, you know, match uh, with uh, cycling. When you take a three-week tour, you know, every day, it's uh, certainly, you know, a real extreme sport because there's other sports which are very difficult, but they don't have to, you know, compete, competition every day for three weeks. Right, Heisdahl. There is that mentality again, giving it a little too much, but recovering straight away and on to the next one. No crashes today, please. Oh. What do you think of this Jim Okovic suggestion last night that there are more crashes now in the peloton because there's too many World Tour teams? I'm not sure about that. No, I don't agree at all. And he was really saying continental pro teams. Um, he was saying, you know, the. Uh, the teams are getting wild cars. Um, he was saying that that is the problem. I don't agree at all. It's the problem with bike riders now. Bike handling, a lot of them are not as good as uh, in the past. And the reason being, as we see Heisdal here, a mountain biker, of course, getting his foot out. And we have seen a lot of that uh, in, the, in the week, uh, in the past week of this Giro. But um, I don't think Anastana rider having a problem here, a chain dropped. Just trying to sort that out, Astana rider. It's got the gilet on, hard to see exactly who it is. We can't see the number. Nice to get a, a closer shot of that. It will be Diego Rosa. Wait to see if we can confirm it. We'll go for Cataldo. Six. It is Diego Rosa. One nil. Good guess. <laughs> <laughs> it was a guess. <laughs> Luis Leon Sanchez is captioned, but I can assure you it was Diego Rosa. Number 26 there, but good job it, it wasn't Fabio. Again, if something's going to happen for Astana, Sean, we were talking about all these problems and all, all the, the courage that bike riders have and the fact that it's such a special sport. We're just going to see it again here. Oh, in oh. fact, it's a crash. Yes, Thankfully, up and OK. And none of the other riders involved either, but just shows what's to come today. Thankfully, the rain has stopped off. Most of the road's drying up a little. New surface. New surface as well. And what sort of difference can that make? Can you get a bit of uh, the talk rising to the surface in different conditions? Well, it's such a fine line. You know, you can be going down in, uh, in a line of riders and you just, you go out a foot, two foot more, there's a little bit of oil maybe from a car or something, and if that happens, well, you know, you slide out very quickly. It looked to be dry there. He looked to be, you know, perfectly in the line and didn't look like he was making a correction, but the bike just slided away from him. I'm going to remind you of that quote from the Richard Moore book, A Tap in a Minute. Stages are like B-sides. 
these stages are like B-sides to the sprinters' hit singles. And you saw the sprinters there. Already a Gruppetto coming across at 12 minutes and 45 seconds down. That's before they hit the slopes of the Mortirolo. It's going to be a long, long day for the sprinters today. And those B-sides, well, those who stay in it will be hoping it does turn into a hit single in Milan. Because that is a mighty, mighty effort today to make the time limit. Our rider had a problem. We just saw Tinkoff Saxo ride on the side of the road as well. There, this is Katusha in the meantime. Oh, and Alberto Contador, a couple of people just waiting up behind. What sort of problems happened here? Well, it was certainly a Tinkoff rider there. Um, it looked like he was taking his wheel out. Maybe Contador had a problem. Uh, Maybe he's giving him his bike, and he could have given him a wheel or a bike. Um, so we'll have to wait and see, but it's uh, Katusha who are pushing on. They have been on the front here as we went through the finish area. Uh, they were uh, with all the team on the front and they're pushing on big time. And it's caused a lot of problems here. The bunch does uh, splits in the group everywhere. Well, they had Yuri Trofimov almost win the stage the other day. He's six minutes and 58 down. He's wearing 177. You know, Zakarin has already taken a stage for them. And here's Alberto Contador. Well, he's on his own bike. 2-0-1. So that's good news for him. Perhaps he did take a wheel indeed, Sean. Looks as though he's still trying to get back to the front of a group, though. Formolo just behind him. Astana riders may be up ahead. In the meantime, chasing group at 103, rider Heistal in front. All kicking off before we even get to the Mortiro. Trying to make some sense of what happened there for Alberto Condoro. We've not seen any images. We just assumed that there was a wheel change or a mechanical. And he's being held back on. No signs that he'd hit the deck either, really. No, it doesn't look like he has um, been on the deck at all. So uh, it uh, just looks like that. He had a, a flash and uh, it looked like the rider that we did see there on the right-hand side. It looked like Basso, actually. And um, he seemed to be... Uh, Working on his rear wheel, so maybe he had uh, taken uh, his wheel out already and given it to Contador and get him underway as quickly as possible. But you can see Contador with four riders in front of him trying to pull him back up to the main group that has Astana riders in it. They will get on, but it's certainly a little bit of a moment of stress, not required really, for Alberto Contador. Jul Jensen's the man on the left hand side wearing 204. He's got a little camera on as well. Tosato in that group. Four riders in front. There's an Astana group there. Oh, and there are groups all over the road here. Well, where is the white jersey of Fabio Aru? That's the immediate question. It's not in the front group. A rider from Etix quick step there, maybe Uran. There's the white jersey. Astana riders at the front, second group on the road. The pink jersey is all the way back down here. Lots of changes, Sean. Yes, uh, lots of splits actually on that descent, and um, it's uh, a surprise to see because it didn't look like it was, uh, you know, really uh, going that fast on the descent. But um, obviously it was because it caused uh, you know a lot of little splits, but they are little ones as well. They'll be all back together pretty quickly, and we can see up front. I think yeah, the crash uh, that we did see from the Astana ride, that, that probably caused a little bit of gaps as well, but um, it'll not be long before everything, you know, a big regrouping. That Astana rider in question is on the right-hand side, Diego Rosa there. Looking around to see if we can see the white jersey, not in this group, so they'll continue on. They want to get him back up and pace him back up to Fabio Aru. should defend descending really, really well here. There's the blue jersey of Pignat and Chalsty. It's the group at the front with Aru. Koenig is in there as well. One hour, you've got uh, Betancourt, Andrea Amador as well. And Andrea Amador still third. He's worth a quick mention as well, isn't he, Sean? He's been running fantastically well. 
Still really hard to see him holding on to that podium spot all week, though, because this is a test that we've not seen him take on before in the high mountains. No, um, well, he hasn't been in that, uh, in, th in that position. He hasn't had the opportunity, let's call it, because he's in a team where you know, there's always a better leader. Um, and, uh, you know, he finds himself, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the leader of the team, and it's going to be interesting. On Sunday, he did a very good performance. He was 42 seconds down. Um, Christwick was just ahead of him at 38 seconds, so that was a uh, little lost on such a difficult climb, and, you know, there was a lot of aggressive racing in the final number of kilometres between Contador um, and uh, Aru, and um, I'd not be surprised if he does, you know, uh, get around and maybe finish in the top five at the, at the moment. Kreiswick is the one who is not that far off and he seems to be riding out of his skin in this race. He's been in breakaways in the earlier part, but in the last number of days, the mountain stage is very, very impressive. Extremely impressive, in fact, as we can see Katusha working really hard for Trofimov here, trying to make a difference, trying to give him a bit of a head start on the Murtirolo. Remnants of the breakaway just behind. So they've made the gap to the breakaway. The only man in front of them here is Ryder Heistar. Clark just behind, you can see Mihailov as well, Pelizotti in the group. 43 seconds. In the meanwhile, for Contador, he's around 40 odd seconds behind Aru. Back we come with Ryder Heistar. Ryder Heistar, the least of everybody's worries at the minute. Certainly Alberto Contador's worries, because there's a gap of 40 seconds all the way up to Fabio Aru. So what's happened here? Well, Katusha attacking on the descent from Aprika all the way towards Tidano, where we're going to have an intermediate sprint. There you go, points and bonus seconds mopped up out the way by uh, first rider Heishdal, and then 43 seconds back you have this group. The white jersey of Fabio Aru, we're told, around 30 seconds ahead of Alberto Contador at the minute. Have they, what's happened here, Sean? Have Katusha attacked and they've just followed, or have Azaru and Astana been a bit naughty and attacked with Alberto Contador having a puncture? No, I think it all happened with um, the descent. Um, we had some problems there. We see some riders having a, have a problem, but it's Katusha who started to ride. They were riding very strong on the front, and I asked myself, you know, why did they start riding at this point? Because with the climb we have to come, um, Mortirola, um, it's surprising to see that, but that has caused a lot of problems and the splits in the group. We did see Contador uh, some moments ago where he was getting back after. It looks like a mechanical problem. And now we have Kat uh, Astana who was chasing uh, Katusha. And then we have uh, Contador who was chasing with all his teammates there. So it's going to be uh, a, a big, big ride into the bottom of the climb. But again, as we can see here, Contador having difficulty closing it down here because Astana are really turning on the pace. And it's a bit of a team time trial between Astana and uh, Tinkoff's Axel. Getting news that Louis Verwaka, the young Belgian, has just climbed off, so did not finish today, Louis Verwaka. Carissio Jensen has done his job, and what an important job it has been for Alberto Contador. The job is not finished, though, yet, and we're going to get to the climb. We talked about the possible isolation of Alberto Contador today. His team are being made to work, and surely it's not an ideal solution or situation at all for Contador to use all that team before he even gets to the Mortirolo. Well, it's a bit for both, uh, for Aru also, because they are riding, you know, out front here. So uh, the two teams have got, you know, to commit now. And as we can see, they're just catching up on the Katusha riders who are up the front, who cause all the damage. And uh, it's not a ride uh, that a lot of riders would be hoping to get as we g come on to the, uh, the big climb of the day. Uh, but yes, you know, you've got to do it here. And, uh, you know, Tinkoff Sachs will have just to try and close this one down, get back to Aru. And... Um, it can leave some of the uh, some of the riders with less riders they would expect Contador especially because the team have been riding on the front already. It will be interesting to see the two main men, uh, Mick Rogers. Uh, will he be able to you know stay uh, up front with Contador on the climb for a long time? Um, Cruisinger also you would expect him to be there more, but they were disappointing on Sunday. Um, but Astana we can see here still walking away at it, but they'll have to commit a bit earlier maybe than Astana than we've seen him in the past. Thanks for all your comments on Twitter, as always. Timothy Rogers says, can riders like myself go and ride the Mortirolo? Yes, but good luck. <laughs> it's not an easy climb. Ramps up to 18, 20%.
Well, I fancy my own chances up there at the minute. That is the great thing about bike racing. You can go out and ride, you know, the big climbs of the Tour of Italy, the Giro. You can go to the uh, Tour of France route and ride them. And you can actually do that, you know, a day before the race. Sometimes the day of the race you can do it, but it gets pretty hectic. A lot of people on the roads at that time. And I think that's a big attraction in biking, because if you look at other sports, like a Roland Garros, to get onto you know, the, uh, the court there to play uh, tennis, not very easy unless you have very good contacts. Golf is the same situation. It costs a lot. Biking, you just get yourself a bike, off you go, and it's a free road for all. Free ride now for Astana with Katusha doing the work at the front. You get the sense that it's just going to take that little bit extra out of Condor's team here, unless Astana are just going to come to the front and push themselves because they've got to ride for a little bit longer to make sure they get back onto this group now. Well, it would be interesting now to see will Astana come to the front here and uh, you know join forces with uh, uh, Katusha because they have the excuse they were riding to get back into the leading group and uh, that will you know cause maybe a lot of discussion in the peloton. You cannot blame them for riding after the group out front. They've got to do that because they've got Aru and they've got other riders in the general classification. And at the moment, we can see here they're just waiting, allowing uh, Katusha to do all the rides. But Contador is closing down quickly. He's uh, in view here at the moment. There was one little shot that was a little worrying if you're an Alberto Contador shot fan then, because two minutes ago he had four or five riders around him. That little shot we saw there, we didn't see what was behind, but that shot there was just... Mick Rogers and Alberto Contador on their own riding. Yes, we can see that the group of Contador, it's uh, just a bit further down this, uh, uh, this little incline here, and uh, it's just getting smaller all the time, and um, it, is, uh, it is a difficult one. If we're on the climb itself, well, then Contador would be able to come across the gap quite, quite quickly on a steeper section, but here uh, it's not that steep gradient, so it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a minor gap, it's a small gap at the moment, but still it takes a big effort just to close down that final 15, 20 seconds. Well, an immediate conversation between Cataldo and one of the riders from uh, Katusha. Looks as though they're agreeing to work together straight away. Astana to the front. They've got 39, 40 seconds, pardon me, towards this man, Ryder High Star. We have the mighty Mortirolo coming up. After that, a horrible, horrible descent. Rain on the roads, rain on the way, clouds around. That might make things a little worse. So much possibility for drama here. It is almost endless. 40 seconds behind Aru. Aru has 24 seconds on Alberto Contador, the race leader. Remember, situation before today was that Aru, two minutes and 35 behind the race leader, Contador. Six stages to go, five realistically, of course, with the procession to Milan for the winner. But we have this today at the Mortirolo. We've got the mountain stage to Chivinia and, of course, that mighty Colle delle Finestre and Sestria double. Going for a quick break, remember to keep it home of cycling though, so much to happen, so much already happening. Ryder Heistal, courageous move, we're used to seeing them from him. We know the Giro d'Italia now, three years ago. Fabio Aru's group, 29 seconds on Alberto Contador. Contado just has one teammate with him. It's not in Mick Rogers. In fact, it is Roman Kreuziger who's doing the work for Alberto Contador. We're seeing that here, and just whilst we're at the break, Sean, we saw Contador looking around, just suggesting the likes of Uran and Chavez and Atapumos with him come through, do some work. They weren't doing anything. No, and uh, you know, there's a lot of riders here that uh, have no interest really in doing anything, and uh, it's uh, Contador's uh, teammate Kreuziger is doing it all here, and. He's doing a real good job at the moment, you know, he's holding uh, the gap pretty stable. As we can see, Contador gave them the occasional push there to keep it going. And uh, it's uh, a real danger zone at the moment until we, get to the, until we get to the climb of the Mortirola. That's where Contador can, you know, start riding across on his own. But on this flat section against Astana with three riders at least riding on the front, uh, it's not the place you try and do it. So he's just hoping that Kruzinger can keep it going for another couple of kilometres, get onto the climb, and then we will see Contador springing into action. Three kilometres to go. Three kilometres until the start of the Mortirolo. Ryder Heisdahl gives up. 
His courageous break is over. And this is the white jersey group of Fabio Aru. Astana have an agreement here with Katusha to work hard at the front, and they're putting time into Alberto Contador, who is 32 seconds back. He had a puncture on the descent of the last mountain. Katusha was the first team to attack. Astana then just followed the racing. Contador found himself isolated, and he has one teammate left to try and pull him back. He's around 32 seconds behind. That teammate is Roman Kreuziger. We've seen the whole Tinkoff Saxo team on the front doing work. One by one, they have been distanced. Another little push from Contador to Kreuziger in front. The Czech is absolutely just burying himself. As Bruce Millington says on Twitter, this is a fascinating stage. Mortirolo is coming up, and we want to hear all your comments throughout today, as we do throughout the week. Hashtag home of cycling as we wait for the mighty Mortirolo. First featured in the Giro d'Italia route in 1990. It came up from the province of Brescia that time. It was climbing up the Evesia side. Ever since, though, very often it's come from Valtellina, which is where we come from today, the hard side. It's not really a mountain that's distinguishable because it's historical or anything like that, like the Stelvio is. This is just a mighty wall that really has nothing in history apart from the fact it was discovered by the Giro organizers in the early 90s and ever since, certainly. 1994 with Marco Pantani versus Miguel Indurain turned into one of those mythical mountains. One man coming back here for Alberto Condador, a Tinkov Saxo jersey, and that's better news for him, Sean. Yes, well, he certainly need that news, and uh, he need that rider. As we can see, the riders having difficulty just getting to the front. Rovni, it looks like now, uh, but who? Uh, oh, Boraro. Uh, but he needs. He needs another man power up front here, and uh, it will be very much welcomed. Forty-nine seconds is the difference, and it's growing all the time here. The fact that a couple of riders were able to come back might suggest that Kreuziger really was tiring, and they were struggling to put some time in. The difference suggests that as well. We were talking about thirty seconds. Philippe Joubert in this group, as you can see. Kreuziger, the man at the back, and this is a really good job being done by a mixture of Cataldo and a couple of the Katusha riders. Zacharin there as well. We're approaching Mortiroro, the weather not looking fantastic towards the top. Chance of little bits of rain, chance of showers. We leave the Valtellina onto a little section of cobbles here. And then we're heading up from Mazzo di Valtellina all the way up through the Sondrio province. We're in Lombardy now and up towards the mighty Mortirolo Pass. Cataldo doing a great job, 49 seconds, as it is Poirot who's come back. 45.3 k's to go to the finish, but with this gap growing, that's just something that is surely worrying Contador a little bit more now. Well, yes, it will be worrying because, um, you know, 49 seconds, it's a big uh, gap when you are uh, running out of teammates, and when we get to the final climb, Contador, or not the final climb, uh, the penultimate climb, but the Mortarola, he's going to have to do it on his own. But I reckon that, you know, he won't have a problem when we get into the steeper sections uh, to do that. But uh, it's not surprising. We see Luis Leon Sanchez, we see Cataldo there really pushing on. The gap growing out to 49 seconds, it's, uh, uh, it's understandable. But uh, now it's going to make it a different race in the earlier slopes here of the Mortarola because Contador is going to have to try and do something here to uh, rectify the situation. 50 seconds, it's not getting any better whatsoever. Contador loses another man. That motorbike will be being screamed up by Italian fans, get out of the way. Here comes Zaccarin in the meantime as we're heading on to the Mortirolo. It is a horrible, horrible prospect for everybody out there. It's a difference of over well over a thousand metres. Burkhardt is coming to the front for BMC. 51 seconds, Contador distanced before the start of it. Means he's already playing catch-up from the beginning, Sean. Yes, and... Um... It's not a nice way to come onto a climb, you know, when you have just 51 seconds to make up on a group of riders out front. But um, it's a it's a, it's a better situation to have to do it on the climb for Contador when you're you know, running out of teammates on the flat. It's a real difficult one because, as we see there, uh, Katusha had a lot of riders uh, riding on the front. Astana also, as we can see, Contador has to take it up now. 
Alberto Contador isolated right at the bottom of the Mortirolo. We've had drama here in the past, remember, the first man ever to go across the top, Leonardo Sierra back in 1990, crashed on the way down, still on the stage. It's 51 seconds for the big rival Fabio Aru here at the minute. He's in the white jersey on the left-hand side, as the stage winner from the other day at Madonna di Campiglio, Landa, pardon me, in front of him. On the right, Contador is taking off, and now, no team, he's fighting for his own Giro d'Italia. Yes, so now it's going to be the big test for him, and uh, yeah, if anybody can do it, Contador is the one uh, who should be able to do it here. You know, the 50 seconds, the way he's been performing in the uh, past days on the, uh, the, the, the more difficult stages, I feel he should be able uh, to do that. But again, Astana, they have, you know, the up front, we can see, you know, the, the manpower is there and it's going to be interesting who is going to be the strongest here because now it's Team Astana against Contador on his own. Well, we saw that on Madonna y Campiglio, Contador here operating with something of a deficit. Photographer's motorbike, oh, Contador trying to take as much advantage as he can off that. He's riding away here already from Rigoberto Uran and is this Contador's big push on the early slopes before we get up to the likes of 18, 20% to try and make the difference and cut that gap? Well, I think Contador will just walk away um, close to 100%. He's not going to, you know, really go into the red here because it's a long climb, the gradient it gets more steep as we get further up and we can see the advantage, 43 seconds at the moment, so it's coming back and uh, now, you know, they have to put land on the front. Uh, Stan also, uh, men disappearing very quickly and, uh, you know, Contador just going through riders, it's amazing. These riders, you know, are in the group getting a free ride to the bottom of the climb and Contador just rides through him and he's looking impressive at the moment, uh, 38 seconds. If he comes back and close this one, well then, you will say, how can they challenge him? How can they, you know, beat him in this Giro? Because this is a real test for the uh, pink jersey. Oh, the pink jersey is already taken nigh on 15 seconds back. Mikel Lander, the only man left for Fabio Aru at the front. We know that Mikel Lander is possibly the man in form at the Giro d'Italia at the minute. We saw that the other day. Kunin hanging on behind. Kreuzweig on the left-hand side as well. Zakarin still there for Katusha too. Superb, superb test this for Contador, who just looks majestic as he dances away from Mihailov. 43 k's to go, we're on ramps of 9.4%, but Sean, this climb does get worse before it gets better again. Yes, it gets much worse because it kicks up to you know 18%, so it has a, a lot of... The most difficult still have to come, and it goes on like that for a number of kilometres, and uh, you know as we can see there, it's 9.4% for Contador at the moment. When it gets into the real steep section, uh, that's where he can you know uh, cause a lot of damage, but he's going to have to make the effort here, so I think when he comes back, he will just you know follow the wheel of Aru and the rest of the uh, Astana riders. But again, Contador, you never know. After you know what's happened here, we could see him going in the attack immediately when he joins up with uh, Aru's group. Action and more drama at the Giro d'Italia. Paolo Tiralongo, we just saw working for Fabio Aru behind, is passed by Contador, who is 41 seconds away from the lead of the race and the white jersey of Fabio Aru. In the standings, two minutes and 35 seconds separate Contador and Aru. On the road, 41 seconds, with Contador's advantage as it stands being eaten into by Team Astana. Katusha have helped them along the way. Contador having a flat, having a mechanical. So much about bad luck for different people in this Giro d'Italia. It's not Astana who directly attacks, so surely no smell of foul play here but with Katusha attacking on the descent everybody else was forced to follow Condor unlucky and he's just getting little bits of help on the way up here from riders who've been in the original break Condor in the pink check fans are there 43 seconds 11.8 percent at the minute this is a climb by the way that is hard excruciatingly excruciatingly so pardon me so hard i can't even get the words out it's unpleasant sean isn't it yes well it's uh, certainly unpleasant and it gets uh, more unpleasant as you get further up here and we can see uh, the ag 2 all mondial rider uh, Rich, uh, rinaldo nocciantini uh, giving condor a bit of a break they are setting the pace on the front and you know any little helps here because contador has been you know giving the effort and now we can see contador takes it up again 39 seconds uh, 
He looked like he was closing here very quickly on the fourth kilometres, but now it's uh, it's uh, becoming a stable advantage there. But uh, which land on the front, I think that's the reason he's really pushing on, and this leading group have just melted down four riders in the front at the moment. Thirty-three seconds were being told. Radio Tour, Radio Corsa measuring the gap manually our graphics and the gps apparently a little off so 33 seconds that's better for condador than it looks he's really working on look at these hairpins we're getting to the sections now where it really really ramps up brilliant little shot there sean just to illustrate how hellish these gradients are yes well you can see in the uh, in the corners in the hairpins it's um, it's a real high percentage and i think uh, what we're seeing on our screen at the moment 9.4 percent is definitely much more than that in the corners it certainly looks as though that is the case here is alberto gondador doing it all on his own and being forced to do so if he is to win the pink jersey and take it all the way to milan next weekend this will be a day when he's done it all on his own teammates have gone a real true test against one of the mighty mountains in the recent history of the Giro d'Italia. Igor Anton, huge climber, former winner of the Monte Zoncolan stage here when he was with Euskaltel. Oh, being told that Contador is now at 40 seconds from Aru. Mikel Lander doing a great job. You can see they've got Kreiswijk on the wheel. You were talking up the form of Kreiswijk. Such a shame that he had such a bad first week in terms of losing time with those silly incidents and crashes and what have you. A bad team time trial too. This is a guy that could have been right up there. Yes, well, uh, he's had uh, a real good run in the past uh, four or five days on the difficult stages. Considering he did lose a lot of time and, you know, general classification at the moment, he is uh, in a real strong position because he's uh, moved up uh, big time. And uh, if he continues on performing like this with what we have got, a lot of mountaintop finishes, well, where will he finish in the end? Leopold Koenig there of Team Sky being dropped. Igor Anton and Alberto Condor riding together. These guys have known each other for a long, long time. Pretty sure that Anton will be doing his best to help Contador here, no doubt about that. Certainly with what he has for now. It's a treat to watch this, Sean, isn't it? We've been so, so lucky at this year d'Italia. And on these narrow, steep, hellish roads of the Mortirolos, the gradient just goes up and up and up. We've still got lots of climbing to go. The climb doesn't top out itself until 35 k's to go. It's a long old one, the descent after that, and of course, seeing what we have right now, 33 k's to go, pardon me, the ascent tops out at. This is absolutely brilliant. Can't at all looking majestic as he usually does. Igor Anton getting himself well. This is clever stuff from Contador, isn't it, using Anton like this? Yes, well, uh, you need that little bit of a breather, um, and he's had that. We did see with uh, Nocentini, he had a little breather for a while and uh, then moved on, and uh, he's doing exactly the same now. And if the riders who are riding at a good pace when you get across to them, and I think the riders we're seeing here with Contador, they're actually open it a bit uh, just to give him a little bit of a breather, and, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's availing of that, and why not? And uh, it looks like Contador uh, with uh, Anton there, he seemed to have difficulty just staying the wheel, but sometimes when you catch up with a rider, he's, you know, after riding at an easier pace, maybe he's not doing anything like he's 100%, so he, he, he can put you into difficulty, and Contador, of course, the experience, he's going to climb this one the way you know he feels that he needs to do it and it's a long climb as you said 23.5 kilos to finish so we're a long long ways from the top and Tom continually looking around here talking to Contador maybe just relaying that fact and just checking on each other am I going too hard for you how's it going Anton a mighty mighty climber on his own there's Carlos Betancourt on the left hand side now Andrea Amador here First signs that he really has cracked in this Tour d'Italia little. He's been left behind, fighting for the podium, remember, Andre Amador. Amador at more than four minutes at the moment. Mikel Land, as it stands, running himself back onto the podium, Sean. Yes, well, for the moment, uh, Landa is going to uh, ride uh, 
he has to ride here. He has no choice. But again, how long can he keep on doing this for? Because you know it's uh, it's a battle now between Land and uh, the other Spanish rider Alberto Contador here at the moment. And we have other uh, riders in between who are giving Contador a little bit of a handout. But we can see there a lot of riders in difficulty. Amador, of course, um, we can see Caruso also on this group. So you know the general classification, the top ten overall, they're scattered all over this mountain. Contador straight past those riders there. Genes is dropped, as is Amador. Igor Anton's job done in front of the Basque fans that we saw with the flags on the side of the road. And on the left-hand side, you can see Landa, Aru, just trying to hold the wheel. And, of course, Stephen Kreiswijk. The top trio at the head of the race, still 41.5 k's to go. A mighty, mighty day on the Mortirolo. Miguel Landa, for the first time, just a little bit too strong for Fabio Aru, maybe entering his first little crisis on this mounting. For the minute, he holds the wheel. Contador has gone past Koenig, and he's still making his way slowly back. This is a brilliant ride from the pink jersey. Yes, uh, this is a real strong performance, and we can see the advantage at the moment, 27 seconds. Uh, so it is coming down. Uh, Contador... You know, was with the uh, with different riders, with different groups. Just had a little bit of a rest period, and then just rides on once again. And uh, we can see uh, Landa pushing on, but it looks like Aru is the one who is suffering. We did see a little bit of daylight between the two Astana riders, so that is going to be an interesting one now. And. Uh, you know, we're in a real difficult section here and a uh, long, long way to the uh, to the top of this climb. Long, long way to go. Just under 10 kilometres to go until the top of the climb. Eight and a half, in fact. Contador at 28 seconds at the minute as Koenig just tries to settle into his rhythm. Contador, though, is flying away from everybody. Newspaper yesterday, Gazette de lo Sport, Mikel Landa was suggested as the man that Astana should be giving a free reign to ride for himself this week by Paolo Bettini. Bettini right or wrong? Because you've seen that Lando is obviously stronger in the mountains here. Yes, well, I think he uh, answered it quite well. He said no, Aru is the... Uh Aru is the team leader, but if he has a big problem and he loses time, well, then I might have to write from, write from my own place in general classification. So you can take what you like from that. But for the moment, certainly, you know, uh, Mikel Landa is riding for Aru. But Aru, we can see there a lot of more movement. The upper body starting to weave a bit. Not a good indication. I'll compare that and contrast that to the style of Alberto Condador, still looking as gracious as ever on those pedals. As we see, Contador about to join up with Trofimov, the man who caused all the problems. <laughs> <laughs> he might have a word or two for him if he's got any breath. Oh, and Aru is struggling here. Aru is swinging on the road. All over the place. Kreiswijk looking stronger as well. And what does Mikel Lander do? What's the communication on the radio right now? Does he look after Aru? That Bass fan with the athletic Bill Bowser on the left-hand side will certainly be screaming for Landa to go on. In the meantime, still out there, still in that gap, is Ryder Heijal in the black and green, the Canadian rider, Trofimov, the Russian behind, and the Spaniard, Alberto Condador, leader of the Giro d'Italia at the minute, at 39 seconds. This is the third group on the road. Amador, third overall on the day. I think he may well be just about ready to drop off the podium if Lander continues his great ride at the front. Betancourt on the right-hand side as well. The distance in real term isn't big at all. That's the fan we just saw a moment ago. Having a word there with Contador. Contador with a little nod and carries on. In his own world of pain. Showing a little bit of weakness. And he is majestic to watch. But even Contador, Sean, 
struggling around those hairpins. Yes, we can see there that uh, he is uh, out of the saddle a lot, but he does climb in that way. But the gear he has there, he looked like to be, if not on his lowest gear, very close to it and uh, you know, having difficulty uh, keeping the thing going. But uh, Contador, he can do that so well. Out of the saddle, it's amazing how long he can just ride out of the saddle for you know, a couple of hundred metres, sit for a moment and then out once again. I think when he comes around here, he may well see, or oh, he can see them. And that is a huge piece of news. Alberto Contador described today's stage as a great stage with capital letters. Does he want to destroy his rival's enthusiasm from the start of the last week and take the stage today? And having done what he's done, having come back from where he's come, this is going to be a huge pushover of Fabio Aru. You're not winning the Giro. I am here, and he's about to join them up again. Yes, and here he comes. Uh, we've just seen coming into view. Um, and, uh, you know, this is a a big, big performance from Contador because he was in the, uh, a real difficult situation before the climb. Um, you know, he needed the uh, teammates he had, and then he had no choice. The uh, beginning of the uh, Mortarol, he had to take it up, and he had that, you know, 40 seconds plus, I think it was at that time. And you know, we must not forget it was Aru's teammates who were riding, and um, Contador has done it all on his own. So to close down that 40 plus seconds in advantage, now it would be interesting to see what he will do when he comes across. Will he be really unhappy with the situation? Because if he, he, he cannot, would be, and uh, will he attack him? I'd not be surprised if we see him, you know, going in the attack immediately. Although we're still 40 kilometres from the finish, he has to try and get a bit of recovery time here. He also has to eat. That's something you cannot forget because Contador, he was in the chase in the uh, in the valley for quite a lot of kilometres before we got to the final climb. So you have to be careful, eat something, drink something. So he might try and do that when he makes contact. We saw the red flag with the white stars on the side of the road there. That is the province of Madrid flag. The autonomous community of Madrid from which Alberto Contador hails. He has his fans on the right hand side of the road and here he's about to break Fabio Aru's heart. Contador back onto the wheel of Fabio Aru. It's taken him a while, he's had to work hard on the flat, he's used all his team and you just got the sense when Kreiswijk attacked at the front and just rode away that Lander's being held back here, Sean. Yes, I think uh, Lander has knocked it off a bit because we did see some time ago when he was uh, pushing on, Aru was having difficulty, he just wasn't comfortable with that pace. And uh, when you see Kreiswijk riding away, because he was also seen to be struggling a bit, he's riding, away, he's riding away off the front of this group, so it shows that they have knocked it down for Aru within Astana. It's funny, isn't it? Because that little attack by Katushu when Alberto had the, the puncture, of course, Astana following At the end, the way it's looking, Fabio Aru could be the big loser of the day. He is not looking great there. Condador with the time to take a drink, time to have a little bite to eat. Aru just concentrating on holding his teammates' wheels. You do feel for Mikel Land a little here because he's obviously as strong as Kreiswijk who's gone away. Yes, uh, I reckon uh, he's definitely as strong as Kreiswijk because when he was setting the pace, Kreiswijk seems to be the one who was in difficulty, but Lander has to, you know, uh, obey team orders and that's what's happening at the moment. We see Contador having a drink there and uh, not surprising because he deserves <laughs> he deserves one half of this effort uh, on the earlier slopes of the of the climb of Mortarola here, and we could see Aru looking around as well. He looked over his left. He looked to his left. I don't think he allows Contador's in the wheel. I'm not sure if he knows he's he's there at all for the moment. Well, this road started life as a goat track back in the day, paved over, and it's the mountain goats who are having a real go at the minute. Here's Trofimov getting back on. Good ride from him, a real dig-in ride from him the other day to Madonna Campiglio, and it's his team that started this off. We've still got the sending to go, remember. Hairpin number 22, as there's 40 kilometres to go for Kreiswijk. It's easy to overlook this ride by Kreiswijk because of what's going on behind, but this is a monumental piece of bike riding from the Dutchman. Yes, um, he's just getting uh, better as this race go on, and uh, it'll be interesting to see you know, on the uh, stage today at the finish because we have a lot of riders in the general classification who are a long ways ahead of Kreiswijk in the overall. He's down in, what, 14th place? Uh, 
and the riders ahead of him in that general classification are scattered a lot further down this mountain so he's going to go move up a lot in general classification. Oh, Contador is attacked, Contador attacks, what does Landa do, does he stay with Aru, does he chase him down himself, Alberto Contador riding to victory in the Giro d'Italia right here, right now, Aru looks a broken man, Contador with a little bit of a rest, away he goes again, remember 22 of the 39 hairpins already covered, Contador through the wilderness, through the difficulty that it didn't look. Landa has just been given the freedom, it seems, to ride for himself. Mikel Landa off to chase Alberto Contador. Fabio Aru, the big, big loser here. Yes, well, I think um, this was the real test uh, for the uh, overall classification, the top step on the podium. And, uh, you know, Aru was in a situation on the climb. Uh, where was going to be the big test, but Contador's the man who has come out uh, way ahead of everybody else, and to ride across the advantage uh, that uh, Aru had of you know plus 40 seconds, a little bit of recovery time, and then ups the pace once again, and we can see now Landa has got all those just to follow Contador, and he will stay in his wheel. Lauren Stendam watching, maybe even from his own caravan. Of course, it's not just Richie Paul who has one of those. Lauren Stendam, so good at the Tour last year, says, go Stevie. Stephen Kreuzweig, he said, we looked and trained at this stage back in 2010. You know every single corner. Aru trying to fight back. Fabio Aru goes himself to try and reach Mikel Landa. It's funny, climbs like this, Sean, climbs in general in cycling, no matter what your level, if you're elite, if you're an amateur, if you're a sportive rider, somebody on one of these for the first time, there are always periods where you have good moments and crises that you have to recover from. The way you feel can change a hundred times throughout the course of this climb. Yes, well, it does on a, on a long climb like this one, you know, which is uh, 11.8 kilometres. You can go through difficult uh, patches and the steep sections as well. Some guys, when it really gets steep, that's where they're in difficulty. It eases off by, you know, a percent, two percent. Well, then you get a better rhythm. And we can see with Aru at the moment, he seems to be recovering a bit, where Contador just upped it a little bit. And, you know, the attack of Contador wasn't a huge attack. It was just a little bit up in pace, and Aru wasn't there to match it. But he seems to be all clawing his way back now to Alberto Contador. Fabio Aru and Yuri Trofimov, as we see Heisdahl behind, still fighting, still going, still pedalling away. Aru in the white jersey here, the Italian, 24-year-old from Sardinia, who wore pink for one day. First man from his Mediterranean island to have that honour. His teammate, Mikel Landa, from the Basque Country, from Alberto Condador's uh, state of Spain. And Steven Kreiswijk has been caught. This is incredible. Right from the bottom of the climb, Alberto Contador, yes, he's had little bits of help, little bits of rest, but he's been the man out of anybody always pushing on here. Yes, and uh, we can see Contador at the moment, he is uh, turning a much lower gear, uh, a much higher cadence, and in the earlier part, we could see, and just tells the gradient was there, that he was having trouble keeping the pedals turning because it was such a steep section, but uh, he uh, recovered quite well here, and he doesn't look like to be in difficulty at all at the moment, the way he's uh, uh, spinning the gear here, and uh, Aru, as we can see, he's just starting to slip a bit more further back. Little look behind from Miguel Landa. Wants a drink. And, of course, his initial thought when he was preparing for this climb would have been to ride for Fabio Aru, not to look after his own feeding and watering so much. Well, again, not a lot of time before the climb. The way everything had kicked off um, 20, 20, 25 kilometres before the climb, we see that descent, uh, which was Katusha who you know, really upped the pace, and then there was uh, a problem. We see some crashes. Contador, we haven't actually heard exactly what was the problem, but it, it must have been a flat tyre, and uh, it put everybody in a situation where to get something from the car. If there wasn't an opportunity there, so um, not surprising that riders are looking for drinks here at the moment what a day 17 seconds Condador putting into Fabio Aru that puts him now at almost three minutes down on the general classification Steven Kreuzweig rising into the top 10 at the minute with this ride still another five kilometers to climb after that as Aru tries to save his day on that 11 percent gradient we have the descent Meantime, at the finish line, the banners still going for Fabio Aru. Big screen set up, they'll be watching that. Thankfully, the rain stayed away for now. Beautiful sunny day. 
These guys will be hoping it stays away on the descent as well. Koenig on the right-hand side for Sky. Fifth before the start of the day. Man in the navy blue with a big N on his back. Andre Amador started the down the podium. 38.5 k's to go. Contador on the left-hand side with Mikel Lander. At the minute, is the strongest guy on the road for Astana. Wanted some refreshment a minute ago, though. Mikel Lander just waiting, holding the wheel. It's Steven Kreiswijk, the Dutchman, with his jersey open at the front, those big, wide shoulders. Yellow jersey of Lotto, Lotto NL Jumbo. The good men to watch in this race so far. And it's this race that we see Kreiswick a number of years ago putting up a great performance, um, of, you know, um, very promising uh, for his big three-week tour. And then he went off, uh, off his best, off the boil a bit for a number of years. But uh, certainly at the moment, back in uh, real good shape. As we can see here, they're starting to attack each other. Um, Trophy Muff attacking Aru at the moment. So sitting on him for a long time and then attacking him. It's not a it's not a nice thing to see because you know when you sit on a rider yeah you take up the pace but you don't attack and uh, it's surprising to see trophy off attacking Aru in, like he's done he's put in a big dig Aru trying to respond Heijdal's closing on him as well trophy off going looks as though Aru is running out of gas here Fabio Aru slipping and sliding down the mountain he's certainly giving it his all he's all not looking good enough at the moment and with quite a few kilometers still to the top. He needs to make sure he is eating. He needs to make sure he is drinking as well. Does he have what he needs? There's descent to come, and then that final little climb. And as I said it, right at the start of the day today, that last climb, Sean, we don't know what's going to happen yet. It's only a third category climb, but i say it again, it's a bit like going out for a few beers and saying it's the last one that did it to you. It's not necessarily that that final climb that's going to do the damage but everything that's gone before and this one here where the guys are leaving all their energy out on the road Aru just ahead of Ryder Heisdahl teeth gritted shown to the world the fight is certainly there still 38 k's to go oh, look at the expressions they're that good, it's come from the Tom Claire school, but I think these ones are real. <laughs> yes, uh, they're certainly real, and um, as you mentioned, the final climb of the day, not the most difficult one, but when you look at what the riders have been doing today, they have raced you know, so uh, so fast, they have really put on a, a big effort on the, uh, on the climb right from the beginning here, and uh, that will certainly you know, uh, be seen from some of the riders in the end, they will definitely, some riders have to pay for this effort. And, you know, Contador, he's certainly the one who's put in the biggest effort because he's had to ride across this 40 seconds of an advantage uh, to Aru and co. Um, and we can see Aru, he's just, you know, uh, really giving it everything here, and uh, that's what he's got to do. But sometimes, you know, you don't have uh, time to get, uh, have a drink, you don't have time to eat. Very difficult to eat on this one, on the, on the steep section, certainly, but on the easier sections, you know, you have to try and not forget to do that, and that could be a problem as well for riders on the final climb of the day. Fabio Aru losing, losing on rider highs down. Motorbike by motorbike comes past. It's just every man for himself, every man against the mountain here. Ultimate, ultimate test on the Mortirolo. Situation at the front of the race with 37.7 k's to go. Stephen Kreiswijk in the yellow and black is the Dutchman. 14th place before today, 11 minutes and 42 seconds down. On the man in pink there, Alberto Contador on the left-hand side. Mikel Lander, the stage winner from Madonna y Campiglia, the Basque rider. Coming into his prime now in his mid-20s, he's only been a pro since 2010. Biggest win of his career the other day. For now, he's without a contract for next year. I don't think that's going to be the situation after this Giro. Mikel Lander on fire here. Interesting to see what happens on the descent as well, because it's a long enough descent that if anybody has the will to take risks and the power behind, if they're lucid enough in their head, then they can make up a little time. We saw it with David Arroyo, didn't we, in 2010? Yes, well, I think uh, Kreiswijk, we've seen him um, of... Uh 
of recent uh, on the descent he is able to you know, go down the uh, the descent quite fast contador i don't think there's any uh, need for him to take risk here he's he's seen enough of risk today with the situation you know before the mortarola climb so he will just follow the rest and uh, if Trieswick is maybe you know pushing on a bit too much i'd not be surprised if we see him taking an advantage on the climb land of course as well you know he's just going to think follow contador and try and get to the finish and uh, um, i think uh, the descent is not going to throw up any major surprises it's the final climb here to Aprica. that's where we could see the battle i think if Contador, you know, is still feeling good, he's going to try and go for this stage victory just to prove to everybody that I'm, you know, the strongest man in this race. And uh, with the situation today, he will, you know, if at all possible, he will try and do it. And what do you think about State Gate a few years ago and the Clan Butterol? He will want on the record a Giro d'Italia stage winners. Aru passes the Sardinian fans on the side of the road. Yeah, Contador, of course, has won stage at the Giro before in 2011, but had them taken off him. When he won the Giro, the one that counts in the record books, according to the UCI in 2008, he did it without winning a stage, so he will want a stage win here, and this is the mighty, mighty stage of this Giro d'Italia. Kreiswijk riding well. We've seen paint for Contador on the road, Viva España painted onto the side of this mountain. A few people on Twitter asking how comparable this mountain is to the other beasts of the Grand Tours, the likes of the Angrilu and Monte Zoncolan. This is one of the first of those huge uber climbs or big, big climbs to be found by uh, organisers of Grand Tours, and it really is comparable to those, isn't it? Yes, well, I, you know, you have to look at the percentage here when it kicks up to 18% for quite a long time. I a climb of 11.8 kilometres, Angular Roo, you know, it is, uh, it is a real difficult climb. The percentage is, you know, uh, real, real great. But again, it's a shorter climb. And, uh, you know, you always have to consider as well how you come onto the climb. If you ride onto the climb at an easier pace, well, then, you know, it makes it that much easier. But in the situation today, the way they race to the uh, bottom slopes of this uh, Mortar Mortarola, well, you know, it's so difficult then, and that's the reason we have seen a lot of riders in difficulty very early on the climb. Landa, Contador, and the man at the front, Kreiswijk. 37 k's to go. Just over three kilometers to go to the top. I think we're into the last few hairpins. 11 to go for Aru. And there's the monument to Marco Pantani. Finished in 2006, the monument to Pantani. This is the Montagna Pantani in this Giro d'Italia. Of course, we have the Cima Coppi, the highest point. Montagna Pantani is a trophy that's given out to another of the mountains to remember Marco Pantani every year. And, of course, we remember 1994. Still the same situation here, putting 35 seconds into the chasing group. The chasing group, though, looks pretty fractured to me. 55 seconds into Fabio Aru, and it's pretty safe to say that Fabio Aru is being ridden off the top spot or any possibility of taking the top spot of the Junior d'Italia here. Aru in crisis, clearly, losing time all the time. Just shows, Sean, how quickly things can turn for the worse for riders on the Giro d'Italia's Aru shot a gel down. Already two and a half minutes behind before today, and a minute behind here. Unless he does this on the descent, then it's really no chance of him winning the Giro now. Well, looking at the situation at the moment unless he can rectify that on the descent and pull something real big out of the bag uh, um, it looks uh, like he's going to lose more time today against contador and of course aru now he finds himself on his own here where contador out front he has Chrysler with him he's going to ride on uh, to try and you know better his position in general classification he would be also maybe thinking of the stage um, and Chryswick is the one who was really putting in a great performance here because he is doing all the pace setting up front with Contador and uh, with uh, Landa but uh, Ryder Heusdal again you know, a, 
a mountain, a mountain of variety here. The way he's performed, you know, being out here on the breakaway on his own, and he's just come across, had a little bit of difficulty in the earlier part of the climb here, but settled into it quite well and really climbing uh, better as we go further up the climb. When we get to the top of the climb, nobody will forget Mortirolo 2015, just like we haven't forgotten Mortirolo 1994. When we get to the top, we'll descend along the Brescia side, heads for Monno, lies down in the uh, Val Camonica. Another of the hairpins out the way. Still the spectators, look. I'm surprised they haven't got their faces covered up. Don't want to be seen by the bosses skipping off work today. <laughs> They've come from all over Europe to do it. Here we go, a sticky, sticky gel. Pepe Martinelli's job to try and keep Aru motivated there. Not even sure he was able to hang on to the gel there. Still going, Aru. Three kilometres to the top for Yuri Trofimov. Rada Heistal with him. It's been a brilliant ride from the Katusha rider here. Mikel Lander still third wheel. What a top ride from the Basque rider again. And the time that's being put into Aru, realistically, it's starting to look like Mikel Lander could be very, very close to Fabio Aru at the end of the day in terms of time away from Alberto Contador. Well, yes, if it keeps on growing, um, well, he will move up into the general classification and uh, get very close to his uh, team leader. Um, it's going to be a, a, a difficult situation for Aru because then, you know, what, uh, what, uh, what car do you play with in Astana? But, it looks like Aru is the one of the two main men from Astana who is uh, in, in difficulty. And when you're in difficulty today, with the days we've got to come, hard to see a rider recovering from that. But it is possible. But uh, yes, Miguel Landa is uh, you know, in, a, in a really good position at the moment. And uh, will he try to do something on the final climb of the day? Or will he just follow the pace being set by Kreiswick and possibly Contador on the uh, last climb to the finish here? Reiswijk, Contador, Landa in that order. 37 seconds ahead of Trofimov and the Heistal who are working together. Aru on the 10.2% gradient, at a minute behind. The local Roberto Baggio impressionist there, running in front of uh, Steven Kreiswijk with his Brescia shirt on. An impression of the divine ponytail, but it's been a divine ride from Alberto Contador. 40 odd seconds behind when he started this climb. This is savage stuff. Trofimov still fighting. Heistar, one of the most courageous rides that we've seen today as well. Remember, he was in the original break, he went it all alone. He's still up there, ahead of a lot of guys who've dropped behind him. No shortage of encouragement for Fabio Aru, even the offer of a can of Coke. Aru on that 9.2% gradient. One oh nine behind now, still losing time. Average race speed today again fast, 34.172 kilometers per hour. You can hear that, non molare, non molare, don't give up, don't give up. He isn't giving up, it's just this mountain is a very, very strict judge of your cycling form and prowess, even more so of your form and fitness. Mentally, it's got to be so hard as well, Sean. A mountain like this, it's just relentless. Yes, well, you just have to, you know, concentrate and uh, focus on what you're doing and uh, just keep on uh, working at it and uh, if you start to lose concentration well then you lose everything and you know um, the situation Aru was in at the moment uh, on his own there um, with over a uh, minute and 15 uh, uh, up to uh, Contador uh, it's going to be a difficult one for him to see him coming back from this one on the descent, although he can descend quite well. It depends out front how fast they go down this one, but uh, 
again if he does uh, really make a good ascent and uh, close down the uh, advantage out of Contador he's going to pay once again on the final climb of the day um, and it looks like he's going to lose uh, at least a minute if it doesn't grow out much greater than that Passo del Mortirolo, Montagna Pantani for this 2015 Giro d'Italia. Many a pro rider have said this is the hardest climb they've ever tackled. One of them, Mark Cavendish as well, of course not known as a climber. But he's the guy who's going to suffer along with the rest of the gruppetto at the back of this. Relentless stuff. Kreiswijk there. Contador again out onto the pedals in that beautiful, beautiful style of his. Looks around again. Mikel Lander just behind him. And let's not forget, it's been Kreuzweig at the front all the way through. They haven't been working together here. Aru just behind, 35 k's to go for him. One minute and 22 now. Aru 235 behind Alberto Contador at the start of the day. Make that four minutes now. Teammate Mikel Lander was fourth before the start of the day. 4.46 down. Heijdal, former winner of the Giro, and Yuri Trofimov. Oh dear me. Well, there's a YouTube video waiting to be made out of him on the right hand side. Twitter star for a day. These guys on the road will be legends for an eternity. Getting towards the top of the climb. Listen to this. Six hairpins to go. Kreisweg, Contador and Landa. The big news of the day is that despite an initial advantage of almost a minute coming onto this climb, Fabio Aru is 131 now behind the pink jersey, and Alberto Contador is riding himself into the history books. First bits of rain start to come down, sleet and snow this high as well. It's not great news for the descent. It's up at 8.4% right now. We've seen the highest and hardest of those gradients earlier on in the climb. 18, 20%. Contador, in the meantime, decides that it's time to have a gel for him. Snow coming down now. Here's Aru. One kilometre to the top for the guys in front. Aru still needs to settle down. Aizdal, Trofimov hanging on and hanging on. Here's Kreisweg. And you can tell that the temperature already changing. Jerseys are zipped up here, Sean. They're ready for the descent. And I think they'll be on hand with gilets and newspapers and the like at the top. Yes, I think uh, certainly will. You can see the uh, little bits of sleet falling there. So um, at this altitude, uh, it's, it's normal. It's going to be very cold on the sense so they will try and wrap up and I think the uh, the piece of newspaper will be uh, handed up here and they will be needed. But uh, we can see Kreiswijk, uh, he is you know, continuing on. He's the man who's been at the front for kilometre after kilometre now and uh, Contador looks to be comfortable there. He just took out a gel or an energy bar and uh, started to you know, get it down him and that's what he needs to do because on this climb in the earlier part there were certainly not enough opportunities with having to chase back on. The steeper grade into well is not easy to do it but he looks uh, looks comfortable at the moment. Aru is the one who is uh, seen to be suffering a lot here and really just giving it 100% to try and get to the top. Oh, is that for cold? Father Christmas is there. Running alongside Fabio Aru, who's on the wheel now of Andrea Amador. A kilometre to the top for these two. 
second and third respectively at the start of the day but it's all about the man in the pink jersey here Alberto Contador said yesterday in the press conference that when Marco Pantani had finished he used to go out on his bike and pretend to be Pantani up the hills around his home on the outskirts of Madrid today he's trying to eclipse Pantani and win the Giro on his own mountain on the Mortirolo and remember can he eclipse him as the summer goes on as well it's not just this he wants to win he wants the double well, Robin McEwen just backing up what Sean was saying earlier on in that tweet, saying that Kreiswijk, the most active rider of this Giro, really deserves the stage win today. But, of course, it's a big one to, to give to somebody else, isn't it, this? Well, I think uh, Contador also will be, the big, will be thinking it's a big one here. And uh, when you consider what he's been through um, with the uh, mechanical problem at a, at a very bad moment um, and having to come back here on the... Uh, uh, Motorola, I think he will be really going for this one. Landa also, he's just going to follow on here. He's not going to do any riding from here to the finish. And Kreiswick is the one who deserves the stage because he's put in the big effort here. Andrea Amado dropping Fabio Aru on the Mortirolo. Aru slipping off the podium. 147 behind. Fabio Aru in crisis here. There's no other word for it on this mountain. Fabio Aru trying to ride his way through it, but he is in crisis today. In the meantime, it's Kreiswijk looking to go out and trying to take the prize for the Montagna Fantani. King of the Mountains points at the top here, and I don't think these two could argue with that. They might have something to say about the stage win, but it's Kreiswijk who goes over the Mortirolo first, Contador in second place, Lander third. It's now all about the descent and that final climb again to Aprica. These two guys, in the meantime, still think that they're in with a shout of a stage win. Heisdahl behind, he's in the black and green, and the man in the red and white, Yuri Trofimov, who was so, so close on the Madonna di Campiglio the other day. 47 seconds behind, what's left in it for the descent? Clock ticks away as they're into the final 150 metres towards the top. You can see newspapers being offered, magazines being offered, coats being offered, bottles, gels, bidons, cans of Coke. The fans love this. And little wonder too, they've been treated to a real spectacle today. This has been an honour to watch. You can see thinking ahead rider Heisdahl showing experience, Sean, he's got the gel in the mouth ready to put down him. Yes, sir. Uh... And uh, you need to do that because still, you know, 32 kilometres to the finish, uh, you need to be really careful uh, with this climb, you know, being uh, uh, such a, uh, an energy sapping climb and the way they have, you know, raced uh, to the climb as well. When you consider all that, you have to be careful so that you do not get a hunger knock. Contador in front on the descent. Alberto Contador pedalling away. He wants the stage here. He wants to get down, get up again take the stage and he wants to effectively end the Giro d'Italia today little doubt about it as Aru is slipping towards a two minute gap now One forty-nine. and Andre Amador just ahead of him he's catching that must have been heartbreaking for Aru to be dropped by Amador there. With all due respect to a rider like Andre Amador, the Costa Rican, but he came to the Giro d'Italia not as a man who was supposed to be at the same level as Aru in the mountains. No, certainly not. Amador is a rider you might expect to get a stage victory, but to be on, on one of the biggest climbs of the uh, Giro and, uh, you know, he riding away from Aru. And we know Amador as well in the descent. He's really going to go down fast, so this is an interesting one. He actually remembered me... Uh, a number of years ago, Genier, Aru, uh, uh, Amador was in the same situation, going down, took a lot of rakes, but he won the stage on that day. 31 k's to go, time for a quick breather. 20 kilometres to go on what has been another dramatic and wonderfully interesting Giro d'Italia stage. It's stage 16 today, the Queen stage, Pinzolo to Aprica, 59 seconds from Alberto Contador all the way back to the chasing group of Heisdahl and with him Yuri Trofimov. Second chasing group on the road here with Fabio Aru ready to take some risks. I thought that Andrea Amador might be the man to lead it down. He watched for the first few hairpins. Aru's gone straight to the front and he's going for it. And I'm already thinking back to David Arroyo in 2010 here. 
he took so much time back on the descent. So many risks, the man in the pink jersey, to catch Ivan Basel then. But he was then dropped once again on Aprika. It can be very, very cruel, this sport, Sean. We've seen big highs, big lows for both Contador and Aru already. Do you think there's turn and room for another twist or two here? Well, it can change a lot. And uh, on the climb, we have seen you know everybody just suffer so much on this uh, Mortarola, and when you uh, really dig in deep, you dig into your energy levels, you come to the top, uh, you're pretty much out of energy totally, and that has a big dis uh, a big effect on the descent, how you can descend, and we can see up front Contador leading down, not taking rest, and uh, we can see Aru is pushing on, and the advantage coming down a bit. Wet descent, rain coming down, it's not as torrential as would make it really dangerous, but it is already a very, very peculiar race situation for Fabio Aru. He's going for it behind, He's taking a few seconds off already. Yuri Trofimov trying to catch this three-man group. You can see just little wet patches on the road, goes from wet to dry. We've got road surface that is a little questionable in the centre, the rest of it is OK. 44 seconds for Contador, Landa and Kreiswijk from Yuri Trofimov. Ryder Heistal was with him, the Canada Garmin man, the Canadian former winner of the Giro d'Italia. But now it's the Russian for Katusha trying to put his hat in the ring for a stage win. In the meantime, Andre Amador and Fabio Aru, third group on the road. Aru, the white jersey, who was second before today, two minutes and 35 behind Alberto Contador and looking to see if he can get back on will get as close as possible before that final climb to Aprica. Realistically, Sean, though, for this man, it's about trying to limit any damage, isn't it? Well, that's what you would uh, expect now, uh, considering uh, the way he's been climbing on this uh, past climb. Although the final climb of the day is nothing like the percentage we had on the Mortarola, but again, uh, when you have to you know, suffer so much there, it's hard to see him making a major recovery. Depending on how well they descend here, how much time they can pull back, but still 143 for Amador and Aru, it's a big, big gap. They're not going to pull back you know, any more than maybe 30, 40 seconds maximum. And uh, then up front, who's going to you know, uh, continue on making the pace setting? Because we've got three leaders out in front with the pink jersey, um, Contador, uh, if they really push on, well, then I think the advantage will start growing out again. But again, Contador, you know, the effort he's make, he has to make in this stage already, and very early in the stage, I think Contador could be feeling the effects on the final climb of the day, as everybody else will. Fabio Aru in the white, Andre Amador, a Costa Rican in the navy blue. 140. They've got around 10 seconds back from the gap they had. 26 kilometres to go. Descending down the Brescia side of this particular climb. It's the time that was first climbed from this side, actually. Back in 1990. First time we saw the climb, we had a moment ago from the other side, from Aprica. Well, that was in 1994. And I think, Sean, we've just seen some drama. Now it's settled down a little in the last 10 minutes, but we've just seen some drama that was very much akin to what we saw in 1994. It was really special. Yes, well, it was a, um, a critical moment for uh, Contador and his team. We see him, you know, riders um, disappearing from the front of the group when he was chasing back after the mechanical problem. And, um, you know, we um, uh, the final um, the final kilometres into the climb of the Mortarola, uh, he was certainly, you know, uh, losing men big time and uh, that 40 plus seconds of an advantage uh, to close that down you know the way he did it he just started the climb got into his rhythm used the other riders that were coming back from that uh, leading group and when he joined with riders he stayed with them for a moment took a breather and then on he went again but when you consider uh, you know the teams that were riding up front we had katusha we had astana and um, contador was all on his own at uh, the moment we started the climb and then to ride on you know up this climb to just catch everybody everybody was you know about to challenge him for the overall classification it just proves that at the moment he is the rider the strongest man of the race by far certainly in the big climbs on the mountain stages alberto condor winning the giro 
on his own today on that climb. He spots a reins coming down. You just see how many hairpins there are on this side. And yeah, not as physically taxing on the descent, but it's certainly mentally taxing, isn't it? You really got to think about everything. Yes, well, you have to concentrate, you know, with so many hairpins, uh, you have to concentrate 100% all the time. And uh, that is, you know, always the uh, energy sapping. And uh, with, with the descent here, as you see, Amador and Aru descending, you know, all the time hairpins coming up very, very quickly. So the time, you know, to uh, get something to eat, to have something to drink, you have to do it very quickly if you can do it at all. Well, we're seeing differences on this descent. Yuri Trofimov has shaved off about 20 seconds. He's now at 29 seconds. His left rider, Heistar, behind. Amador and Aru just eating second by second away. It's clear that these guys aren't taking any risks at all on the descent. No, we could see there that um, Contador, when he was leading on the descent there, he was, you know, taking it uh, quite calm. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's normal. The situation he's in at the moment, he doesn't want... Uh, um, you know, take any risk. There's no need to take risk, and he's you know, uh, he, he's been there in the danger zone at the moment uh, on this stage already, uh, where he has got to rectify the situation. So no need to add any more danger on the descent. Trofimov certainly taking enough risks. 29 seconds, 134 back to Amador and Aru. Again, in the same situation, forced to take those risks if they want to cut back any time. Balloons for all the little villages and towns we always see. Of course, when we came across the line at Abrika, spare a thought again for all those sprinters and everybody else in the Gruppetto or the autobus. I think it'll be a double decker bus today, Sean. Everybody will be there and coming across very, very late indeed. Yes, well, they will come across very late and, uh, you know, they will have to take. Uh, they will have to make the effort, and a lot of people say, well, you know, the riders in the uh, in the bus, in the group Etto, they get an easy day, but it's not an easy day for those guys because, you know, they are not good climbers. They have really to, you know, suffer on the climb, but then the descents, they have to really, you know, go down at a fast rate as well, as fast as we're seeing the guys who are uh, fighting for general classification. So it's never an easy day for the uh, the non-climbers, the sprinters, let's call them, and uh, hopefully, you know, they can... Uh, get the calculation worked out well and uh, they will make it to the finish within the time limit. A lot of calculation to be made on this one. 22.1 kilometres to go. This is the lead of the race. 23 seconds ahead of Trofimov. Fabio Aru losing the Giro d'Italia as it stands. I think it was all about trying to secure second place realistically that and that's the sort of mood that was in the press conference yesterday with Astana okay we've tried and tried and tried to bully Contalo we've had a go at him we could not drop him let's concentrate on getting second place the minute though that is really in danger as well here Sean yes well I think uh, we've seen Aru you know he is uh, starting to suffer and there were uh, signs of that in the days past, but uh, today was the ba day where he showed it big time. And of course, this mountain, if you're a little bit off your best uh, against the other big favourites for the general classification, then you uh, get caught, then you get caught out. And that's what we're seeing with Aru at the moment. And uh, now the talk with uh, Astana about you know uh, the second place in general classification or the challenge for the uh, overall victory. Now he's going to have to fight big time to hold on to his place because the days to come, if it's not today, well, I can see there's, uh, there's other days in this race where he is going to have difficulty holding on to general second place in general classification. Contador, Landa and Kreiswijk in the front. Just over 20 kilometres to go. Not far behind them now is Yuri Trofimov, who's put in the descent of the Giro so far. Well, Contador wants Kreiswey back on the front. Little conversation there. I wonder what's being said. Surely we can't be talking agreements about the stage already. No, I don't think uh, there can be any discussion about the stage, uh, the stage victory because Mikel Landa also, he is, you know, just the one tagging on here. So uh, it's not as simple if it was just two rails out in front. If you had Contador Kreiswey, well, then you could start to... Uh, uh, thinking about the stage victory, if if they ride well together, maybe he would be gifted the stage. But again, this stage for everybody, it's of such importance. I would be surprised if any of the three uh, 
riders out in front, you know, are just hoping that they can be the better one on the final climb and try and get this stage victory. Is it more of a chat about, well, you stick with us, we'll help you in the climb and we will make sure that you get as high as possible into the top five and give you even a chance of making the podium next week? Well, who knows, you know, what they talk about and uh, sometimes, you know, they can be just saying, well, you know, uh, let's try and just keep riding together and uh, hold on to the advantage we have and see what we can do in the final climb. But it's just impossible to, uh, to know or to have any idea what they talk about in this situation. Amador and Aru. Last time gap was around a minute and 30 seconds. Looks as though we're going to get a proper one now. Come through the next little banner. Top tick on the left hand side of your screen. Little flick of the arm there from Amador who wants Aru to share him with his bit of work. It's going to be another minute and a half again. Certainly an improvement to what we saw at the top of the mountain. 131 there. So they've shaved off about 20 seconds on most of the descent. Still looking to where Trofimov is. He's got to be really close to these guys. Former under-23 mountain bike world champion. Look at how they took the corner. Same corner. Here's Aru. Now, oh, Aru's got a problem. Mechanical for Aru. <laughs> and after all of his travails, all of his problems on the mountain, he now needs a new bike. Fabio Aru's going to get one very quickly, and today is quite simply not his day. Fabio Aru onto a new bike, exactly what he didn't need. Looked like a, uh, a rear puncture, and, uh, you know, not the... Uh, not what he needed at all, certainly, you know, with, uh, with Amador, it was a, uh, a, a good situation because when you have a rider who wants to push on and Amador has the one, uh, seems to be the one who's pushing on, but uh, now he has to try and make it back up to Amador. It's going to take that bit uh, more energy again before we get to the final climb of the day. Fabiado losing and losing, losing out today. Alberto Contador, today's big winner again. Yuri Trofimov, whose uh, advantage seems to have disappeared a little. Kreisweig putting the work on the front in the meantime. Trofimov 58 seconds behind. A little bit of advice from the team car for Katusha. At 1 minute and 31 from the race leaders, you've got Amador and uh, Hejdal now. Aru is at 1.48 after that mechanical. It's all happening today. 15 kilometers to go in the meantime for Trofimov, who is now 106 behind and looks to be running out of gas. This is the next group on the road. Amador having a little chat to Ryder Hajdal. Amador trying to save his podium spot. Gaining time as it stands on Aru, but losing it on Landa. So many battles within battles this week at the Giro. We're going to see for that podium. Yes, we can see this. Uh the pole battle is starting here, but uh, we can see Trofimov, he was told by his director just to uh, knock it off, take it a bit easy because he has the two riders, uh, Amador and Heistal, coming up. So I reckon they decided it's best to just wait and uh, try and join up with the two chasers because on your own here with the, uh, the, uh, the ground he has to make up over a minute, he's definitely not going to get across to them. Welcome back to our British viewers. We're at the start of the final climb of the day. Just over a minute of an advantage for the three leaders on Yuri Trofimov. A minute and a half over these guys. Amador and Heijdal. So the climb just starting, and it's at the start of this climb to Aprico. We had the biggest ramp, Sean. It goes up to 15% very briefly, but after that, it gets easier and easier and easier to the line. Yes, um, there is a section after uh, about a kilometre into the climb. Um, it starts to kick up to that 15%, and it does go on for oh, almost a kilometre, 1,200 metres, the real steep section. And then after that, you know, it's... Uh, 
down to 8% and then it does go downhill on a number of occasions as well so it is uh, it is an easier climb certainly what we've been over today it's uh, it, it's not anything near that percentage wise and it all depends on the riders now who's got you know that little bit more energy left because on this climb you have to be able to do it on a bigger gear and uh, if you have got the power, well, then you can guess, uh, you, you can make up ground if you're uh, really finishing strong. Fabio Aru has been handed a few lessons today. He's also found out that he is not on top four. Mikel Landa, the man for Astana in this front group, waited and waited and waited with Aru for a while. And he must be thinking, what if? because there were moments when he could have pushed on before Contador made that front group on the climb. Well, he could have pushed on, but I don't think it would have been up a great advantage because it was a long ways from the finish, and I don't think he would have been able to hold off Contador and Kreisweg, for example. So, um, you know, he was uh, given the free card or the free hand, let's say, when we see Aru was in real difficulty. Lander was holding back for quite a while, then he got team orders, OK, you can just follow on, try and stay with Contador, and that's what we've got at the moment. And now it's going to be a battle for the stage victory because he's, he's going to have to try and pull something out for Astana. And uh, Lander, of course, we've seen winning a stage already. He is a real good uh, finisher in this sort of stage, but uh, will he have enough to beat Contador? And Kreiswick, uh, he's going to be also a one, you know, if he have still got something left in the end, it's going to be a big battle for this stage victory between the three leaders on the road. Kreiswick worked so, so hard on the climb as Trofimov is joined by Hajdal and Amador. They're on the top right-hand side of the screen, second group now on the road. Fabio Aru still trying chasing those in the box above him. Left-hand side, you have the front of the race. In the yellow and white, it's Steven Kreiswick, the Dutchman, 14th overall before today, riding himself way up into the top 10 with this ride today. These guys have a minute and 25 on those behind. It's a very, very good gap, given the terrain that they're on, the type of riders they are. Contador, who's put in the performance of the stage today, alongside Steven Kreiswijk for different reasons, making up all that time on the Mortirolo, a majestic, beautiful ride from the pink jersey. And Mikel Landa behind for Astana, start of the day in fourth place, looks to be riding himself as it stands, very, very close to, if not onto the podium. Aru still a good 15 seconds behind the chasing group. Who's going to go for the stage win? Mikel Lander at the back here, the Basque rider, he was the 15th different winner of all in all 15 stages so far. Equals a record set back in 1953 and 1954. Amazing that in 15 stages, all different winners. Will we see that record broken today? Will Lander actually get his second stage victory? Um, he is in a real good position at the moment. And, you know, looking further down the climb, now we have uh, three chasers. Um, Aru again, unlucky, his mechanical problem at a time when he was with Amador, so if he had, uh, if he hadn't had his mechanical problem, well, then he would be with his uh, three other chasers. That would make it a four-man group, and that would be certainly a much better situation where Aru now, he's going to have to make a lot of this climb, if not all, looking like it will be to uh, get to the finish here today. Fabio Aru, Riding for his place in second. Riding for his place on the podium as well. That was the virtual standing as we just saw. It's still Contador Aru with Landa leapfrogging Amador into third place as it stands. Aru making his way back, it seems. But it's a big, big ask here. He's got the Sardinian fan running alongside. There's Heijdal trying to put time in. Amador behind him as well with Trofimov, who's always looked in trouble. He's always looked pained during the stage we've seen today, but what a fighter Yuri Trofimov. Yes, well, he has been fighting all day, and on the Mortarola he was fighting all the climb. It looked like that, you know, he was going to really blow at any moment, but uh, just kept on battling and uh, still battling away there, and that's his style a bit as well, I think, you know, you you look at him and you say, well, he is really in difficulty. He's not going to last much longer on this climb, but he is, you know, hanging in there and still in a real good position in the in the general classification. You know, he's going to uh, uh, make inroads as, as well. But uh, Aru, on the uh, beginning of the climb here, he's uh, starting to work at it quite well. He can see the three men out in front of him, and it looks like he's just uh, coming back slowly. Will he be able to get across this gap? And 
it'll be very important if he can make it across to this one for morale as well it will give him that bit of a boost it also make it a little bit easy on the climb if he can get into this group of three riders have a little bit of recovery time and maybe you know it's all about limiting his losses now 20 seconds for Fabiaru to the next group one minute and 48 from Alberto Contador, a man over whom he had an advantage as Contador is putting on the pace here. Remember, almost a minute, late 40s in the terms of seconds at the bottom of the Mortirolo for Fabio Aru over Alberto Contador. Of course, in, in putting all the pace on Contador, desperate to try and get back onto the group, lost all his teammates. Also, Astana lost most of their team as well trying to put the pace on. Only Mikel Nieve, uh, pardon me, Mikel Landa was back. Mikel Nieve, of course, running the sky, the fellow Basque rider. Here is Fabio Aru. 15 white jerseys so far in his Giro d'Italia career. He wore the white jersey four times in 2013. Not once was he in charge of it in 2014 because it was Naido Quintana who eventually won the Giro, was in that young rider category, even though we saw Fabio Aru wearing the jersey on occasions, looking after it for him. And here's Mikel Landa. When he won at Morano di Campiglio the other day, it was 60 years ago to the day of the first ever Spanish victory in the Giro. What a day to mark the anniversary as we see Aru battling away next to his car. Being taken out of the gap there. No shortage of encouragement for him. Amador with Ryder Heistal. 11 kilometers to go. Aru losing time and losing distance on those in front at the minute. Certainly, if those gaps are to be believed. A gel for. Mikel Landa and Abidon as well inside the final 11 kilometers. Aru's had Abidon as well. Amazon has been quite hot on a lot of things. Is it uh, the arse saver, as they're known by the brand name? He's pulled off the saddle. Virtual standing looks like this. Four minutes and 21 for Alberto Condoro ahead of Fabio Aru. 4.46 over the man behind him, literally on the road there, Mikel Landa. Amador in fourth as Aru is in pain. It's not just today where Fabio Aru is losing out, Sean. It's pretty clear that the stage is going to take a heck out a lot of it. Yes, it's taking a lot out of some of the riders and uh, out of all the riders, I reckon. But uh, the riders who are suffering, you know, for a long time now and who have been in difficulty on the big mountain of the day the Mutterola well you know it will mark you for the next days to come and um, at this point in the race it's all about recovery and that's what we're seeing here some guys who are not recovering as well starting to uh, suffer fati fatigue they are the ones who have uh, been caught out today and Aru is certainly one of those we see the Astana car there it just went by Aru has went up to the leading group of three men up front uh, to Mikel Landa they took the splash pad off of the splash pan as they call him as well and uh, you know they are going to have a uh, try and you know have a go for the stage victory here it's all about yes um, Aru now we can see that the general classification his teammate is going to be getting very close as we go further up this climb will he be able to you know continue on working at it and uh, hold the advantage to hold that place in the over in the general classification from his teammates Contador and Kreisweg in particular doing sharing out the work here Condador will want this stage I'm sure there are going to be no gifts here Condador doing enough of the work as well we've seen him do that wonderful wonderful ride over the Mortirolo yes we know that Kreisweg did a lot of work to the top but it's not as if Condador's had a free ride today <laughs> no it's not uh, uh, at all um, but I think if Kreisweg goes in the attack Condador will just see some Wait and make Lander do the chasing because he's the one who was getting, you know, the free the free ride for a long time here. So um, I think that will be the way. It would be the normal situation. Contador, you know, he is going to uh, try and go for the stage victory, but he's going to he's going to have to make it hard for Lander because we've seen 
we've seen him when he won his stage on Sunday. He is a real good finisher uh, when it's a mountain top finish. Although this one may be not as steep, but same situation for Contador. So it's uh, it's going to be a real interesting final here as we're inside the final nine kilometres. Yuri Trofimov at the front looks tired out. Another gel down the throat of Andre Amador, a tired flick of the elbow from Ryder Heisdahl. They are absolutely spent, these guys. 109 from the pink jersey group. And 30 seconds now for Fabio Aru. Looked like he was getting close at one stage, didn't it? And they've just cruelly pulled away again from him. A little bit of false flat to come up. One, three, eight is the gap all the way back to Aru. This guy continuing what has been a brilliant, brilliant ride. Such a dramatic day at the Giro d'Italia. If you haven't seen it all, then make sure you've set your videos for the highlight show because this has been very, very special. Lived up to all of its billing so far. And the last few messages coming through to Alberto Contador. Strategy, tactics, how's he going to go at this? Is this going to be the big win he wanted? Remember, he used to go out on his bike and imitate Marco Pantani on the climbs after watching him on the telly on the outskirts of Madrid. Can he do it by taking the stage win here? 8.4 k's to go. Aru, as an Italian, of course, naturally having Pantani as a hero. 5.2% at the minute. Nice little graphic here is going to show us exactly where we are on the climb. These guys sending all the way to the finish, but it gets easier. Into the car, there's Beppe Martinelli, the second furthest man away from us. Remember, for those of you tuning in late, Richie Port did not start today. Off home to prepare for the Tour de France. Fabio Aru, white jersey, 144 behind. Assuming it stays the same, Sean, clear winners and losers for you. Alberto Contador, the big winner. Mikel Landa perhaps with him. Kreiswijk in terms of time as well. But the clear, clear loser is Fabio Aru, isn't it? Yes, well. Certainly, Aru, we've seen that he's uh, struggled a big time today. Um, it's the day that he has, you know, shown uh, the weakness. And uh, when the other riders in the general classification see that, well, then, you know, they're going to try and work on that because, you know, the second uh, place on the podium, uh, I think there'll be a lot of riders saying, with what we've got to do in the rest of this week of Giro, they're going to say, well, Contador, untouchable, but second and third place in the podium, it is a possible uh, one for us. And, uh, when you look at Contador, where, uh, where he's come from today, he was in a real difficult uh, situation going on to the Mortarola, and uh, you know the way he just rode across that 40 second gap up to Aru, and he had Aru had teammates with him who were riding on the front. He had to do it all on his own, and uh, you know there's other riders here who are also going to make uh, big moves in the uh, overall classification. Kreiswijk is the one who is very very impressive, but. All the riders we have here, all very tired. You can see out front, Contador, Kreiswick, they are so, starting to suffer as well. But our three chasers here, Trofimov and, um, and, the, and the two other chasers, they're also really suffering. You can see when they get to the front, they're looking around, wanting the other riders to take a pull. And this is where Aru is going to really suffer because we're on a section of the route here where, you know, if you're with two other riders, well, then it makes it that much, that much more easier. You can save two or three percent, and that is going to you know, mean a lot in the final seven kilometres. Fabio Aru, is he going to get a penalty for late feeding here? Same with Mikel Lando, we'll have to wait and see. Virtual standings show Alberto Contador leading by four minutes and 18 seconds. That will change. There are time bonuses on the line as well with Mikel Lander at 4.46. Fabio Aru still in second, but only just. Astana occupying second and third places. This is Andrea Amador, who at the minute 
He's slipping off the podium today. These are tired, tired legs behind Amador, Hajdal and Trofimov. This is the front trio. Alberto Contador has ridden like an absolute dream today. A real heroic piece of riding to get himself back on the mighty Mortirolo that has proved the distance between men and boys. Amador going for it again. Heijdal this time left once more, but he's had the courage to come back and back and back. Remember, Heijdal in the original breakaway today. Yes, well, he has done a, a big ride today to be in the breakaway earlier on and uh, you know, to be still up here uh, in this position at this point of the race. And uh, we can see here, you know, Amador pushing on. Heijdal having difficulty to match the pace, but again, he's a one, you know, can just work away on the climb. And we have seen him do that so many times or already in this race this year. Um, and uh, you know, he is going to make uh, big inroads in the general classification. And again, as we mentioned about uh, Kreiswick, Heisdell is the one who was performing well. He's been up in breakaways a number of times and never giving up. Well, he started the day 13th at a very similar time difference to uh, Stephen Kreisweg. Kreisweg was 14th at 11.42. Heijdal was 13th at 11.17. If it stands and stays like this, Kreisweg will just be going ahead of Heijdal, but both of them will be going comfortably into the top 10. Good rides from them today. And remember, up the front, with 5.6 k's to go, there is still the stage win to go for. Alberto Contador, when he went to recon this stage in the winter, had a drive around it. Of course, not all of it was peddleable. Mortirol at that stage just said that today it was going to be all about Mortirolo marking the stage, making its big mark on it. The finish wasn't too bad, he said. Poor Fabio Aru, almost 40 seconds behind the chasing group right now. And Sean, it's looking increasingly like he isn't going to get back on. 